Welcome back, friends, to Occultus Anonymous, sponsored by Roll20, uh, and viewers like you. Uh, thank you very much for your support, your engagement, your hanging out with us, and just kind of being awesome. Uh, so if you're liking, subscribing, following, uh, retweeting, commenting, all that stuff, thank you very much for your support. We do appreciate it, and it means a lot. Um, I There are some of you who are out there who are not in Discord, and that's okay but you're commenting on every YouTube video and it's just a lovely little, oh, you're there, or, oh, you're there, or Songbird did what to what number of vampires? Hmm, yes, definitely remember that episode. <laughs> uh, my favorites. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, thank you very much. It really does mean a lot to us. And yes, if you do want live conversation with us, do come by Discord, www.yeetinto.space and come hang out with us. Uh, we'd love to chat with you about old stuff, new stuff, what you're playing, what you want to play, or birds, dogs, pets, cats, whatever. Uh, so, oh, a special shout out to our patrons who support us monetarily. Thank you, Adele, Al, Alexander, Bernie, Buck, call a multi-person Praetoria relationship polyarmory. Still good. Chandra, Chris, Clara, Doggo Deloon, Emil, Funzo Suvra Ali, George, Isabel in the Sky with Lightning, who needs diamonds. <laughs> James, Jenny, John, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, John, Josh, Julian, Cat Feathers, Klaus, Crazy Man 1772, Michael, Milo V2, Milo V3, Ms. Grumpy, Moku, <laughs> Mozart D Minor, Noba, Not Noctal, Other Guy, Perry, Porter, Puppeteer, Riafio, Ryan, Shaksara, Terran, Thomas, Usuf, Sama, Vortex, Walkies, and Zoltan. Thank you all for your support. It means a lot. Uh, and yes, those of you who nice. regularly change your names, you know who you are. Yeah, just keep it up. Thanks. It's fun. Uh, yes, so when we last left our witches, quite literally in this particular case, we had uh, Haley, Priscilla, and Antimony, um, the upperclassmen and two younger classmen. Uh, younger classmen? Younger classmen. <laughs> it's already plural. Um, of, <clears throat> hang on here, because I'm going to brutalize it if I don't actually just look at what I wrote. Uh, what is the name of the school? Where'd my notes? This is embarrassing. Totally prepared for this. Chiron's, Chiron's Conservatory, Conservatory of Might and Magic. Um, and of course, we did not, unfortunately, have a chance to meet up with Ralph's character, who we will introduce shortly. Um, but we had some news about a secret society being outed as a bunch of people who hated and wanted to remove people who were incapable of magic. And a lot of their plots were revealed and... Uh, Basically, they were kind of defanged or rather in the process of it. And there's some social stuff going on there that uh, Antimony brought up within the school. Um, but we also had some other fun stuff like we had a potions class. We had a game of Thunderdome, which is the school's uh, magical pastime, which is kind of a magical cross between lacrosse and gravity magic. We didn't go into the details. Just make it up in your head. Played on the inside of a cube. Played on the inside of the cube. That is correct. Um, there's some other interesting magical landmarks. You can hear about those if you go watch our first episode, because this is a continuation or more of a sequel, I guess. We're going to jump forward a little bit. Um, uh, blah, 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 uh, blah. The one notable thing that we learned, besides the fact that we had the uh, magical secret society stuff getting revealed, is that our three witches did discover Chiron in Chiron's magical grove where anything can be grown and Chiron, the centaur, schoolmaster, headmaster, potentially the same Chiron who, you know, tutored Achilles, Achilles, Theseus, Achilles, Ach Achilles for sure. But yeah, I can't remember all of them. They did a couple, Never. couple heroes you might recognize. A lot of uses. Yeah, a lot of uses. The exact quote. Thank you, Chris. Um, and uh, yeah, but he seems sick and uh, not not doing well. So there were some concerns, and uh, that is kind of where the episode had ended. Uh, now, before we jump into where we are now, uh, it being a couple weeks have passed, Ralph, would you like to introduce your character? And we may ask some questions, um, and Chris and Craig, feel free to join me in quizzing Ralph and getting some additional characters 
uh, character details on the spot because this is this is punishment. You have to build a character, Ralph, on the fly. <laughs> oh my gosh! How terrible, right? <laughs> Oh, man, performing an improv for five or six years has not prepared me for the moment. 20 years of gaming, <laughs> describing a character off the top of my head. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, but be before we get into my character, I just thought of, speaking of puns, I mentioned earlier. Oh, no. For Thunderdome, wouldn't you want to call the implement you use in that a test racket? Ooh. Yes, absolutely. Oh, oh. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. All right. There we go. I'm updating the school info as we speak. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. <clears throat> so, my character's name is Guillaume Gurdefer. He is of French ancestry, but grew up in New England and has always felt it to be. Uh, an undesirable burden, his family lineage, and cultural history, because his family has an important reputation as devoted public servants, often in a magically adjacent capacity. So not all of them are wizards. But many of them helped wizards either deliberately or unwittingly. Right? There were doctors, there were soldiers, there were teachers, that kind of thing. And so in addition to that family lineage, he's the first in several generations to demonstrate the sufficient aptitude to attend the conservatory or anything like it. And so he came in kind of as a not a, um, a timid kid, but a nervous kind of indifferent kid. And then all of that pressure resulted in him feeling a lot of anxiety. And so it took him a while to get over that. And him working on that led to him acquiring a few personality traits along with a specific reputation and responsibility, and in a particular familiar. So working against his youthful temerity led to him becoming quite blunt. So he's um, pretty, let's say, um, impatient when people aren't willing to acknowledge the truth or when they underestimate him. And then also having to practice the willingness to do dangerous things when he's afraid has led to him becoming a bit reckless. So he's the kind of person who, if he escaped from a house fire, he would immediately turn around and run back in when he realized his friends were still inside. And this is the particular trait that his familiar often plays on because he had heard these stories about these like little creatures that accompanied the members of his family. And he thought it was just like an imaginary friend that the kids had and they thought of it, right? And then when he, you know, realized his magical ability, he realized he, he learned that um, it was actually true that they had these familiars. Right. And so every single one of the mages in his family in the past has had a little mouse or a little a little creature. Right. Never the full sized, but always some small creature that was um, an embodiment of bravery. And so in his case, um, his familiar's name is Gautier, right, which is the French equivalent of Walter. And he's a little Redford mouse who wears a full knight's regalia and often runs at people with a lance. So Gautier is pretty obsessed with chivalry. Go ahead. Literally runs like on two feet kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he's not mounted, but um, he, he that was the next to, question. <laughs> yeah, he attempts to joust people. That's, 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 that's what he's doing. He's tilting at almost every challenge possible. And so he often leans on, on Guillaume's, a trademark recklessness in order to encourage him to do chivalrous things because all Gautier cares about is being a knight. And in his mind, that means any challenge can be solved through chivalry. And the best kind of chivalry is reckless chivalry, cavalier chivalry. Question if anyone in return refers to Guillaume as a as a mouse, does he correct him and say, I am a gentleman? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Gautier definitely doesn't see himself as a mouse. He's like, this is my body, right? But I am a knight just like anyone mm. else. <laughs> um, so I'll pause for questions. Uh, well, uh, yeah, that's true. Actually, are any other questions before we carry on with a little bit more about the character? Mm -hmm. Happy to. Um, did uh, you? What classes do you teach? 
Mm. That is something I was going to get into next, but yeah, and we can, we can cover that now. Okay. So just looking for connections with the students. Right? Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Guillaume is uh, often a guest lecturer in, or maybe he's taken over the class himself, even though um, he's magical security. Uh, he excelled in defense against malicious magic. And um, he's a master at it. And he considers it his priority and um, source of pride that he's so skilled and he's become capable of it because he's experienced some consequences when he was young and trying to learn to be um, where people he cared about got hurt because he wasn't willing to stand in the way. And um, then he rose to the challenge and became extremely capable of taking care of other people. So he has the guardian strength and um, he's a master of protective magic. Yep. I do imagine that. No, I think uh, I, I think Professor uh, whoop, just had it. Gwendolyn Appletree uh, mm-hmm. is still definitely teaching. But, you know, those days that she's out and stuff, you know, Guy is yeah. probably the the go to expected substitute who comes in and, you know, like guest that. lectures and stuff like that. Yeah. Perfect. That sounds great to me because he's oh. still still young because I think he's 21 or something. Yeah, he's 21. Yeah. Mm hmm. Did you say what, if, what uh, Hold on, Craig. I think Chris was about to ask a question. Um, did you? I might have missed it. Did you say what your like trope was? Oh, uh, I didn't choose a trope. Okay. Did you come up with a name for it? For the trope? Oh no, yeah. I didn't. I didn't realize you can name your custom trope. Yeah. Um, sure. Like making a custom class in Oblivion, right? Yes, give it that's a, a good point. Why not? Yeah, you yeah. could name it, but I didn't even think of that. So let's think on the top of the. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, hmm. Actually, while uh, Rolf is looking that up, if uh, you all would <laughs> uh, be so kind as to remind everybody else of your tropes, just to give everybody a little one one answer kind of intro to who you are. Uh, I am playing Priscilla Ashburn, who is the withdrawn bookworm. Hmm. Um, that it. Go. I know it in my head, but I'm trying to get that. There we go. Okay. Um, and I am playing Antoine Inkart, the offbeat eccentric. That's right. Would something like a pressured scion or something like that be a good one for you, Rose? Yeah, I think that's that. That would work. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, let's see here. And you know what? Yeah, I think I think that's um appropriate considering his family still expects him to do something other than perform magical security at the school. It's just a source of familiar comfort now that he was able to carve something out for himself. His family probably expects him to lead like a magical right. security organization or become in charge of some humanitarian mm-hmm. group, whatever it is. Just picturing magical black water, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> uh, th- yeah. That was uh, I'm more of like magical white helmets. Yeah. Or something. yeah. <laughs> uh, though it does bring up the the question um, mm-hmm. what kind of, and it's kind of for everybody, but obviously Ruff is going to have a, a weighted interest in this is how much security does the school have, and how much of it does it actually mm-hmm. need? We're getting into some of that more world building side of stuff. Yeah, I would say regardless of what level we set it at, it's more than it needs. <laughs> That's kind of where I was leaning towards. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Just based on the, you know, the legacy and the sort of uh, nature of the school. Yeah. What I was thinking is when we first uh, started discussing uh, things that were occurring in the school mm-hmm. and new happenings. We had talked about new challenges and dangers and weird things happening to people, right? And like people were kind of on edge. So perhaps uh, Guy is part of a new security crew and he jumped at the chance because then he wouldn't have to leave the this school. Mm-hmm. context mm-hmm. of school in which he got comfortable, right? Is that he's only been on the security force for a year when he was going to be going on to do something else, go into the world and figure things out. And he's like, oh my God, I can wait. I can spend more time avoiding my family's expectations. 
yeah, I'll do this. <laughs> yeah. It's what are you good at? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I don't like that. Let's see here. Looking through. I think that was kind of everything else uh, I was going to see. Did we have anybody taking defense against malicious magic? We did not. Okay, cool. All right. So, and uh, as before, and honestly, it's <laughs> this is a very open game. So if anybody else is like, "Ooh, what about? then feel free to mm -hmm. chime in on that. But to kind of set our stage, it has been a couple weeks since uh, Antimony, Haley, and Priscilla had spoken with Headmaster Chiron in the gardens. Uh, there were a couple little ingredients that Priscilla needed to pick up from there for some potions that... Uh, man, can I mem remember the name of the professor? But I have it here. Uh, Mr. Farbridge, Professor Farbridge, uh, was teaching and kind of encouraged her to test and experiment with because she's a, you know, she's learning and really seems to have a, a grasp, a knack for it. Um, and it has been uh, a couple weeks since that, during which there's been a couple more visits with Chiron. And it's it's very uh, coincidental visits where there's a little nudge of have you heard about this thing have you looked into this have you seen this um and rumor is going around and it's it's a poorly kept secret that chiron is doing this with like a lot of students mm. and he's just asking you know hey what, what do you think about this one and uh there's been a couple punishments where the headmaster has come out and mm, yes, you've been fighting. All right, I need to report on such and such a thing. And people are like these very weird out there, uh, even within the conservatories standards, very occult and esoteric kind of topics, which has led some students to, you know, think Chiron is up to something. Of course, a lot of the older students are nodding their head and going, Yes, he is up to something. He's Kyra. This is this is kind of the thing. <laughs> He's always up to something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> this is this is far and wide much more active uh, than previously, as opposed to where like, oh, he'd, he'd be up to mischief. This is something where he's getting the students involved. Um, and for uh, uh, Guillaume, you go to me calling him just Guy. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, you being part of the faculty you go into, you know, the teacher's break room and stuff like that. It's not exactly your place to be there and hang out because you are security staff, but you are welcome there. You come in, get another cup of coffee, you know, check in with some of the teachers Some of the teachers mention, oh, there is this, in, you know, altercation between some students. And I don't know that they rely on Guy to do any kind of punishment, but Guy is closer in age, has some of that experience and is you know, a proficient guardian where it's like, hey, these two are, you know, kind of mixing things up. Could you go talk to them, you know, as the the I'm not a teacher, you know, kind of supportive, you know, uh, makes sense. kind of kind of look at things. And there's, you know, other staff that could, you know, other security staff that could do it. But I mean, Guy treats this place not necessarily not leaning too much in the Hogwarts trope, but this is a home. This is this is a place that Guy enjoys. Yeah. Whereas for some of them, they come in, they do their job, you know, eh, snot nosed brats, and you know, there there's that difference, right? Yeah. He um, might care about it more than the students and the faculty, right? Because he's been there longer than any student, uh, and he has a different investment in it than the faculty he definitely would have been somewhere else right yeah and before. for many of the professors obviously they had graduated gone on done stuff and then come back as experts in their fields where Guy yeah. hasn't left yet and so is yeah. more yeah. a part of the school uh mm -hmm. so it's it's a it's a different aspect and all the professors are more than happy to utilize that but you've noticed in said break rooms that the teachers are getting a little 
antsy with Chiron's antics. And mm. it's not that Chiron is asking anybody to do anything illegal or against school rules or anything like that. But it is weird that he's involving the students mm. in this way. Um, and so there's been some not necessarily behind closed doors discussion, but there's a lot mm. of. All right. Well, you ask your students over there and, you know, Miss Endoba's over here at talking with, you know, Professor Farbridge just because these are the names I have uh, about, OK, well, what what lessons did he you know, what what essays did he assign? Oh, yeah. When he busted into your class and was asking stuff, what what was he asked about? And you can see they're working and you, they flip over one of the chalkboards and there's the <laughs> papers and pins and, you know, strings. And what is he up to? And I've, nobody has any clue. And it's starting to get into the point now at this point, we're two months into the school year and everyone's wondering, is this a big, complex prank that he's pulling on us? Is he <laughs> is he what is he doing? And of course, it's April 1st. Hi, guys. Uh, you know, it's like, what is what is he up to? Um, so that is some of the background that uh, Guy has picked up. Um, mm. I'm trying to remember. I have a couple other notes and then we're jumping in to see uh, similar to last time. This is where my notes end. Um, mm. And we pick up with um, with everybody else. Oh, yes. And then I have my little uh, as Craig mentioned, how do how do we have connections with uh, students? Um, uh, Craig, how how has uh, Antimony's um, uh, stance on the way the school is treating? And I go pull them up <laughs> where where'd my notes go. The Sisterhood of Screaming Skulls is what I should have named them. I remember that. So we're going to call them. We're going to keep calling it's them just that. the Sisterhood of Skulls. But Sisterhood of Skulls. Yeah. yeah. Um, and has has she kept on uh, or notably, has she gone back to Necropolis Club? Has she gone back to Transfiguration or has she just kind of stopped showing up to a couple classes? Um, I guess it kind of depends on what the administration has been doing about the like the um, forcible gotcha. outing of people that they were trying to do. Gotcha. OK. Yeah, no, that, that, that's good. This is, so this if, is if that's backed off, then so is she. Right. Um, a lot of it, you know, was that there was that initial knee jerk reaction about, hey, this is an hmm. organization that has been revealed to be up to a lot of no good. And while nobody is, you know, there there is definitely the step back. And I think probably started with you know, your Necropolis Club, I think that was Thursday night. Um, and mm. then leaving Transfiguration on Friday because you guys ruined Haley's Friday night by taking her to the garden. Uh, yeah, man, how, can, how do I remember all this crap? Anyways, um, over the weekend, coming that following Monday, there were some changes and basically it shifted from, hey, if you're part of this organization, you're bad to hey, some news has come out. And if you are involved in a group that you don't think you should be and need a way out, if you're concerned or have questions, uh, and basically the school has put together a... Okay, in my head, I keep uh, thinking of Robert Picardo, the doctor, uh, right, the doctor, uh, yeah, the yeah, hologram yeah. from... Voyager? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah. It, it, yeah, I know. Sorry, Chris. We're, we're in there. It's just, it is a non-person <laughs> magical being and it, basically an animate spell with a bunch of help and uh, advice topics and very <laughs> the doctor. Listen, I can only tell you about so much stuff. Um, this is my limit. And it is ensorcered ensorcelled enchanted uh to basically yeah. not speak of what anybody tells it to anybody else and creating this quiet person that you can talk with and just throw ideas and questions at and it will try to help you and the mm. teachers and notably chiron probably up you know giving a, a speech says you probably should talk to a real person Probably find a teacher that you trust that you can talk to about this. But 
if you're not ready there, if you have, you know, you can go speak to this uh, entity, uh, the advisor, capital A. And so there's some people who were interested in that and some other and there is an office and you can just write your name up that you're and of course there's no questions of what's what you're discussing and they do make a big deal about oh you could ask it about anything are you having problems with uh are you in a dating relationship and don't know what to do with you can ask uh and it was this broad push of like you can ask anything but what they're really concerned about is people who may be in secret societies that they don't want to be in um and uh that lasted for about a week before I definitely went in there a bunch of times, not knowing the like sort of social context of what was happening. Oh, sure. And there, <laughs> and there are uh, there are definitely some folks who like went in for other questions because they're and some of them just because it's curious, this non non person entity that we can talk to. That's weird. Let's go check. What, let's go see what it and it gave really good advice. And based on the questions it was asked, because it doesn't know these students at all. But yeah, that lasted about a week after which the rumors started going around of, well, the advisor's room is, you know, bugged. Oh, yeah, you can tell the advisor anything. The advisor won't. Oh, but but what if somebody's listening in? So there's been this weird. Yeah. And so there's this weird tension that has kind of come over the school. Uh, Not quite. Cold War. (laughs) mccarthyism kind of stuff but everyone's like who is listening what and that and and chiron's asking questions of stuff and by now a couple weeks later uh and we will get back to craig and figure out what he's actually going to sorry a lot of lore dumping um but now things are a little bit tense and people are a little unsure of what's going on and uh, the student body is starting to kind of feel it. And there's a little bit more of clickism and people are moving in, mm. you know, not necessarily that anybody's getting beat up or, you know, anything like that. It hasn't escalated that it would never escalate to that. Right. Uh, but yeah, there, there's that tension that has been building. Sorry, cutting back to Craig, uh, going back to classes after kind of hearing this or, uh, so after those changes have been made, um, she would have uh, backed off on her stance as well. Gotcha. Um, the, I mean, there still might be some follow from rumors and stuff like that, because at some point she was like the chapter chairman of the society or whatever. But, right. but she's also started uh, corresponding daily with the suggestion box. Ooh, to the yeah. chat with Chiron in the garden. Yeah. So she'll make a, she's making a point of like leaving like a 10 item list in the suggestion box every day of, Things that she thinks should be improved in the school. I love it. It's just, I'm going to make this school better one suggestion at a time. <laughs> gotcha. That's funny. Uh, gotcha. Um, actually, I guess, yeah, we can cut back over and we'll, we'll figure out where everybody's kind of at. Uh, so what has Priscilla kind of been up to in the past couple weeks? She has been... Um, Diving headlong into the sort of in in her like estimation mission from God <laughs> to to cure Chiron, yeah, like That's probably to about. the to the extent that she's gotten some like bad grades and stuff like that. Oh, oh like, wow. okay, like too much too much focus, like it like a like too much, right? And probably has then been like talked to by chiron like, mm-hmm. like it's 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 fine take your time <laughs> yeah sure. um and then yeah uh what is or what sorry was there anything else chris okay cool i'm not sure um for Guy, how has Guy been handling this this kind of stuff hmm you know i i feel like Chiron was the first person who really encouraged Guy to take responsibility for his own fear. He never made him feel like um, he was weak or it was his fault that he was afraid. Just um, when he's in class and stuff, 
and he's around other students, it, it wasn't the case that they ever let him know that this is something he could master. Right. He always he always felt like um, it was an affliction he would have for the rest of his life. And then Chiron was kind of like, look, you know, you, you all have a choice over what you're going to do. And um, as soon as you realize that, then you can really make a change. So because of that, Guy trusts Chiron a lot um, and trusts that Chiron will just be present to give him cryptic advice or sometimes really pointed direct advice um, in important moments. So when it seems like everybody else is struggling, that's when Guy goes and he attempts to get Chiron to be honest about what advice he might have given others. So when he hears that Chiron is like, you know, perhaps pranking people, it concerns him a bit because he thinks of Chiron primarily as a source of, of encouragement and direction. Mm -hmm. So he's probably talked to Chiron a little bit here and there. Try to see what's going on. Also try to see if he can get him to be honest about what might be afflicting him. I gotcha. And then he's also done what he can to prevent the faculty from taking a punitive stance against the students because of the choices they've made about the associations they've had. Sure. Okay. I like that. Um, cool. So actually, um, uh, just because I was looking at the school schedule and I'm like, mm -hmm. perfect. Uh, so we pick up Monday after a weekend. Uh, everybody is well rested or well, actually, yes, you both. Uh, sorry, my uh, Priscilla and uh, Antimony are both underclassmen. So, no, there was no partying. You may have been staying up a little <laughs> bit. Late. Well, that, that's true. Who am I talking to? Uh, absolutely no partying. <laughs> Went to bed at eight o'clock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a bit early. Yeah, okay, that's right. Uh, nine fifteen, <laughs> <laughs> but that was in bed at nine o'clock. Lights off at nine fifteen, right? Yeah, um, and uh, we 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 pick up uh, Monday morning uh, with uh, Priscilla and Antimony in uh, not quite PE gear, uh, but you know a little bit more get dirty and sweaty because it is time for ass class. Yes. Which, yes. Um, <laughs> now, arcane implements and sorcerer's sword play. Uh, oh, yeah. Which, armaments. Excuse me. Yes. Arcane armaments uh, and sorcerer's sword play, uh, which, uh, Guy, you have been called in uh, because it is it is your particular specialty. And uh, we have. Oops. Where is my professor here? Uh, yes. Uh, professor Conrad Lynx, um, mm. who is. Um, there, there, there's rumors that he was in the KGB, the OSS, and um, not MIB. Though, sure, the <laughs> MIB too. While we're at it, um, MI six, MI six. Thank you. Yeah, and over his many, many years, this guy. Uh, okay, well, we're just. It's Christopher Lee. <laughs> just straight up Christopher Lee <laughs> introduces himself as Conrad. When a man Lynx. is stabbed, he doesn't scream out. Right. <laughs> exactly that. Um, yeah. 100% and like, oh, yeah, yeah. Have you seen my movies? Yes. Terrific. Yes. I enjoyed them a lot, but I'm I'm out of that now. No. Uh, <laughs> but he, yeah, straight up has that that like bent and gnarled oak a uh, kind mm. of figure to him. And cool. uh, yeah, there is a lot of the the training that uh, Conrad Professor links to some, but he does tell most people just call him Conrad, which is weird when you're talking about, hi, I'm 13. Hi, I'm 97. Um, mm. But uh, a lot of his stuff is very practical. Like there's a dueling mm. club. That's that's a club. You can go do yeah. that and beat each other with sticks and, and swords and stuff like that. Uh, he comes in and it's like, OK, today we're going to go over what happens if a troll comes at you in the street uh, and just like you have no time. You have <laughs> no prep. Go ahead. Sounds like a Monty Python fruit episode. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, uh, I did warn them this 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 episode is, compared to the last one is hopefully a little less. Uh, Little less drama, a little more silly. yeah, a little more silly. Mm -hmm. um, and, but yes, uh, Doctor Lynx is there, and for the students, this is kind of odd because normally he has 
this modern plate set. If you if any people have seen um, Kima, uh, the Mm -hmm. historic European and where they have big, heavy duty like uh, I don't don't remember. Is is it the uh, the carbon? uh, Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Big, heavy duty but modern suit of armor and like a legitimate great sword and a wand. Like the guy is an absolute certified badass. Everybody knows it today. He's in a uh, sweatpants and a t-shirt um, kind of leaned back over to one side and Guy is there probably mm-hmm. in street clothes. I- I'd imagine. Um, and uh, yeah, Conrad. And I can did- now describe Guy. Oh, like. yes. Absolutely. I knew yeah. we missed something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I was waiting. So uh, Guy has shoulder length, dark brown, curly hair. Uh, and it's kind of tousled, be a little unkempt, but it's in stark contrast to uh, his hazel eyes, which look perpetually determined and are ensconced in high cheekbones. His skin is the color of teak wood. And he stands. Let's say this. Um, He stands as though um, he won his iron spine in a contest of blood and sweat. Not not quite military. Alert and ready. Yeah, no, not military. He looks like this is something else. Almost like it's a performance, Mm -hmm. but it clearly doesn't look. um, It doesn't look tiring for him. It just looks like this is this is who he is now. Like that. Uh, so he just basically has resting badass face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I, going off of that, I, I'm I'm sure there's quite a few students who are doing this number between Guy and Conrad. Guy and Conrad is like, is there a, is there a relation? <laughs> no, they look very different, but there's something about them that's very much the same. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, Priscilla's first thought is. Oh God! I barely make it through class when the old guy is doing it. <laughs> this guy gonna make us do? Uh, yeah. Oh, so, uh, uh, and Guy, you have not been prepped other than being told that you were going to uh, do the instruction. Uh, oh, okay, cool. And uh, and knowing Conrad and like the. One hundred percent. He has never called you in to teach before. Mm. This is and knowing him from the past, it's like everything is a challenge. Everything is a test. Um, He's one of those guys who, uh, especially because he has the advantage of magic. He's like, oh, no, no, we're we're doing this with sharp swords. Uh, We're doing this, (laughs) you know, Um, and there there have been more than a couple like rush to the uh the hospital with like oh no no we reattached the the arm but there was a lot of blood loss so you do need to go lay down <laughs> for a little while kind of stuff and yeah there there have definitely been letters from stu- uh, from teachers and students and parents but Chiron and basically most of the experienced teachers are like do you have a better teacher because yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get better than Conrad and everyone has to kind of like, oh, OK, yeah. And he does it also that. <laughs> like is the traditional sort of thing of the school. It's not just magic. It's also like you got to learn school. this. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And. Uh, uh, so, yeah, everybody's there and there's that little bit of anxious milling around. There's obviously no desks. Right. Mm-hmm. There's there's probably like some of the you know kind of fall pads but they're stacked up to the side there's no practice weapons out or anything like that and conrad just has this look on his face that probably makes even gee a little bit nervous it's like what is the old yeah, man like, doing yeah uh, but as as you know all the students are in you know and like right as the you know the little second hand you know chimes the hour and he kind of steps up and again, super slouchy, hands in his pocket, goes, all right, everybody, mm-hmm. today we're going to have some practical hands on education, which is usually. Um, oh, no. Right. Yeah, it's, it's usually there is a monster in a closet. Uh, 
And uh, so I need a couple volunteers from the underclassmen, which like <laughs> <laughs> there's a bunch of upperclassmen who are like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Priscilla's head just like snaps straight down. <laughs> Do not make eye contact. Uh, That's she, she does definitely have the conspicuous flaw, though. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, and uh Sorry, I was trying to get Craig's reaction, but we got. So at that statement, uh, Antoine is terrified because she's supposed to be in Transfiguration this morning, but Transfiguration class got canceled and they just sent all Transfiguration students over here. They sure did. Shoot, I read the schedule wrong. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> so um, she's kind of panicking a little bit because this sounds like it's about to get really serious and this, she's never done this before. So I think I'm going to do a flight roll to try and be inconspicuous and not get noticed. Craig, I love you. Thank you for rolling with the punches. Yes, that's exactly what happened. I'm lying now looking for Craig. Hilarious. I looked straight at Craig and Chris on my sheet and it's blue and purple and I looked out here and I could see blue and purple and pink. You guys use two similar colors. It's It's all my fault. I love that. Um, oh, you know, we should have done this more proper. proper. Actually, you know what? No, that's fine. This is kind of like spur of the moment. Um, mm-hmm. uh, this is definitely a panic. Like, oh, should I have to hide? <laughs> so, it seems like a snap decision thing. Yeah. It is. It does feel kind of snap decision. I technically should have set the difficulty first, depending. Mm-hmm. Uh, that said, uh, no, it's all good because a 14 is in the middle of a task where success is extraordinary, but decidedly possible for those who are skilled at it. So 100% um, like you're in uh, amongst uh, quite a few students because there's two classes in here piled together. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, so you just kind of like melt in amongst everybody else. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I love that. Uh, so Conrad's hand. Well, he he walks through and like it's definitely it's 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 the worst game of duck duck goose ever mm-hmm. where he just oh, yeah. touch, <laughs> like touches people on the shoulder no 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 volunteers no no I, go ahead i was gonna say like priscilla looks down and then when he starts walking close she like looks up a little bit and then realizes that everyone has moved like from a five foot radius around her <laughs> <laughs> and i think conrad conrad like you know just is the nose to everybody and everybody has started to move like i think people are moving away from conrad and you haven't realized it and so you get you know the hands clasped behind the back the forward lean down you know down to your eye level uh it says priscilla looks down at your bad bean i think you're our volunteers um Okay. Fabulous. Um, and like motions for everybody to, to move about and motions Guy over and, uh, you know, kind of, you know, wraps the arm in and says, um, how are we with, uh, oh, shoot. Go to my notes. Don't make names up. That would be terrible. There we go. So, uh, how are we with Ents? With what? No, uh, sorry, talking to Guy kind of under his breath, but saying, how are we with Ents? Hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and pats you on the shoulder and uh, says, uh, whatever you'd like to show our teacher prepper, you have yeah, 30 seconds. Uh, and walks away as he, and you watch him whip his wand out and starts performing what clearly is like some kind of portal or summoning or something's about to come out Mm -hmm. and every the whole crowd has been yammering yammering what's good what's gonna happen then that it starts to happen and everyone's like it's coming through right (laughs) (laughs) um so uh gi turns to priscilla and that look of determination is now focused on her um Mm -hmm. it doesn't change very much as is um just become a little more deliberate, right? A little more like engaged in you. And he says, um, I know you're scared and I was once too. Uh, the important thing about situations like this is to know that 
it's always better for two people to fight together than for one to try and defend someone else who isn't trying to defend themselves. Do you have your wand? Great. And then um, he takes um, from a, a waste pouch, he pulls out a little capsule inside of which is Gautier. And Gautier, like very, um, um, with a flourish, he pushes open the gate on the capsule and hops out onto the ground. And is Bean nearby? Is Bean out? He's in the bag. In the bag? Okay, gotcha. Well, <laughs> this might work differently. Um, uh, uh, Gautier does this elaborate um, courtly bow mm -hmm. to uh, to Priscilla mm -hmm. as he hops off of Guy's hand. Um, and then, you know, in this... this um... Bean, like, peeks out a little snout. A uh, reminder <laughs> that Bean is a Virginia opossum. Right. Yeah. <laughs> with um, hides so, and with Priscilla's very expensive designer bag. Also, <laughs> you have about 15 seconds. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, a Guy with an, uh, sorry, Gautier with an, with um, a, a stereotyped, uh, exaggerated French accent says, I will defend you, madame. And then um, Guy so nods. Uh, what'd you say? I said, he's so cute. Yeah, he's, he's pretty cute. <laughs> oh, that was in But he's a knight. He wants to be respected. <laughs> So anyway, um, Guy pulls out uh, a shielding focus. It's like um, pentagonal, rough pentagonal rock. And he has it in his left hand. And then he pulls out a uh, Hawthorne wand. It was steel core, I think. Steel core. Uh, and then, uh, of course, looks back at Priscilla and says, together. Okay. Uh, about that time, just because it's dramatically appropriate. And I imagine you two are kind of looking at each other, talking. So we come it over to Antimony, who's watching your frenemy. Actually, yeah, that's true. Have you guys kind of made up or is it still kind of a little antagonistic? On Antimony's part, there was never any antagonism, but she understood that she um, hurt feelings unintentionally. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, um, we did have so that. So she's been trying to... <clears throat> So she's been trying to, um, I don't know if make up for it is the right word, but she's conscious that she's caused some injury and she's looking I for think a they, chance to they, write that balance. I think they get along fine, but like Priscilla doesn't go out of her way to like be friends with anybody, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Like she, she just gets, and it's not intentional. It's not like a rude thing. It's just, I'm going to be over here doing potions and yeah. antimony doesn't like potions. So obviously. See. <laughs> there's the bonding of let me help you but yeah that's true uh, so yes there's the final flish and swick flish and swick whatever and moving swick. on in Chiron's conservatory is sure. different words thank you <laughs> um, and the doorway well not really a doorway the portal opens and this is a brightly lit modern lamp uh, lights room and you just view into this heavily wooded dark forest um and yeah it has absolutely 100 percent all the brooding aspects that one would expect from a straight up haunted forest and there is a big kind of creaking wooden sound and this big head kind of peaks under and it's gnarly and there are definitely some good ends out there. Our good friend Treebeard. Everybody loves Treebeard. Um, mm -hmm. And then there are some other that get twisted up with rage at industrialization and stuff like that. And this one definitely looks a bit on the on the more grumpy side. It starts to. Well, it grabs the insides of the portal and kind of pulls Whoa. itself through. And of course, the magically. uh uh prepared room starts to grow in size uh, notably the roof as it kind of steps up and out and you know i think we have the you know the two heads looking up uh oh, yeah. at the thing and uh conrad kind of leans back and says good luck <laughs> um about the time a big fist is slapping down at you all 
And there's definitely like you are the first targets. It's coming for the rest of the room next uh, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And how you know do you going at it first? Um, would it would it be a semi reasonable assumption that we have our brooms with us for this? I think that's absolutely reasonable. OK, cool. I, I believe. I, yeah, 100 percent. Conrad is like bring everything that you would have normally leave everything mm -hmm. else at home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like there's no books here. You know, some people have bags and he's done checks. He's done bag checks where it's like Ooh, you're not okay. carrying that outside. You're not carrying that outside. Why would you carry, you know, now being in? The, I think that's where it's like, OK, the possum can stay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it takes a part of the room of where you could have, you know, helpful things. Right. It's not like a bag of holding or anything. Right. It's just a regular, just big bag. Yep. Um, with a little possum baby in it. Yeah, which, uh, um, while you're bringing that up, yeah, okay. um, both of you, what are your brooms? Or if Guy even brought his broom. Yes, of course. Guy brings his broom with him everywhere. He refuses it. He refuses to leave it anywhere. It's the kind of thing where um, if you're used to carrying um, some kind of protective device and someone asks you to um, piece bind it or put it somewhere, Right, like no, no, not happening. You have like so, a, like a shoulder strap for it. Exactly. I love so that. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, so you can imagine somebody having something like that on their back, right? Like he has his broom with him at all times. <laughs> is it is it a little bit shortened? It's it's the you know it's the carbine version of mm -hmm. a of a broom. It's a little more dangerous because you got to keep yourself balanced over that shorter space. But man, you can take it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's scarier the ride, but right. Hey. He's not worried about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, do you? And because Chris, what is your broom? Especially with the value. Um, mine is the Bolting Four Thousand. Okay. It has a fast look and mm -hmm. provides plus one to flight checks. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. and the Valiance one is the one that lets you ignore your fears. I can't remember exactly. who some somebody is broom twins, and I can't remember who it was. Mm -hmm. It was me and Ash, I think. Haley. Yeah. Okay. I think it's Haley and Priscilla. Plus one flight. Okay. Um. So yeah, she she runs back over and like slides her bag back over towards the crowd. Like, Bean, get out of the way. Um and then grabs her broom. Like, well, he told me to be brave, so here we go. And like hops on and like just starts trying to like fly around the thing's head and distract it. Awesome. Okay, so very, very uh proactive uh kind of handling this. As yeah. opposed to just dodging, like, no, I'm going to go out of my way to distract yeah. it. Well, yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, I like that. So, yeah, especially when, like, she she takes notice that it's, like, rampaging, more or less, right? It's right. not just, like, a, a, a programmed sort of response that this thing has been asked to Yeah, it's not a training dummy or something. Us, right, right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll get to a roll here uh, at once. Uh, what is Ralph, what is Guy doing? Excuse me. Uh, Guy uh, likes to handle threats straight up. He has something he wants to do to try and take care of everybody else. But um, he realizes that, or he has learned, that the best he can do in any situation is make himself the primary target. And so he wants to frustrate the int by blocking its blow, by defending against it completely. And so as it goes to swipe down, he's going to trigger a burst of shielding magic that just causes his, his hand to bounce away. Okay, cool. Uh, Pretty blunt, like punching his his fist. Kind okay. Of thing. Um, and so the question there is, um, are you doing so magically or are you just rolling grit and the magic aspect is the fluff? Mm, no, he's definitely doing it magically. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah, let's get a little bit of a magic roll there and same question for Chris. Uh, and we'll go through the like how to cast a spell stuff here momentarily but are you doing this distraction magically or are you trying to like use the broom and your movements to distract i think she's just relying on her flying okay okay so um so in your case we'll just get uh hmm, what check do you want to use for for distracting it light okay I mean, that's fine because you could use, yeah. you know, because uh, what's the other one? Charm would also charm. work. Oh, charm. Yeah. Makes sense. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm specifically imagining dodging, dodging, like 
getting in its face enough, causing it to, you know, trying to headbutt you and, and dodging around it and distracting. Okay, right? No, I'm totally good with that. Okay, so it is going to be a flight check. Um, it is not particularly um, intelligent. Um, it is more rampaging brute than anything. Um, but uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a 12. To be a distraction. It, it's, it's a little up there. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well. At a d12 in flight with a oh, one yeah. to my stat bonus mm-hmm. and the plus one from my broom. Mm-hmm. And you and should probably still have three. <laughs> um, all right. Now, this is a snap decision, so only you can add uh, uh, adversity tokens. So that wouldn't put you at an eight. So I said 12. All right. To give you an idea. Uh, add four. Oh, yeah. Four. OK, yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the range of minus one to minus four, the description is you fail, but not too badly. There might be some very minor short term consequences, but most won't shift the story for more than a minute or two. These characters have tried and almost succeeded. That that's the level that you're at. Um, I bring this up. Wait, am I? If well, excuse me, if you sorry, if <laughs> thank, thank you, uh, that would be if it was the minus one to mind if you're short by one to four. Um, yeah, your level, it's it's bad, but not a disaster. Um, there will be some short term consequences, which may lead to some more immediate difficulties, but nothing you can't handle or focus on. Uh, Sounds great. Yep. Uh, and it also means you get an additional adversity token. So. Yeah. Um, oh, excellent. I'm also easygoing. So I get two when I fail a check. Right. So I get yeah. plus three. You get plus saying? two or do you get two? gain two adversity yeah, tokens two. when you fail a check? Okay, so you get two. Okay, I thought you were saying based on where my bracket no, was. Your fail, yeah, no form. failures do not give an increasing amount of adversity tokens if you fail oh. at all. Yes, sorry, oh. I gotcha. Hi guys, we played this system once before. <laughs> before. Um, but yes, um, the initial flyby distracts it for a second. Um. And there's a swatting motion, which basically impacts the broom and sends you kind of sideways. Um, and I will just tell you, if your broom gets hit again, um, it may break. But for now, nothing. It doesn't affect your ability to fly or anything like that. Imagine there's sp- some magical sparks that fly off of it very, you know, appropriately. Oh, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's in the actual like tail. <laughs> Good old biplane with the flames coming out. Right, of it. exactly. Yes. Yeah. Like, whoa. <laughs> now, of course, these are magically sparkly, multicolored flames. Sure. I imagine. Sure. Yeah. Um, cool. So then we jump over to uh Ralph, who's um casting a magical spell to um uh, pull it, the creature's attention or um, to defend yourself. To defend myself. Okay, cool. And to defend everyone else in the vicinity. Sure. Um, okay, so I gotta scroll down where we find spell checks. Okay. So um we're gonna walk through the difficulty of this. Um so I believe it starts at a 10. Uh da 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 da. How much it bends, blah blah blah. I calculate the difficulty of spell. Right. OK, so magnitude of the effect. So what what is happening uh, here to defend yourself? Uh, is um, it natural, unnatural, reality bending or reality breaking? We may have to discuss this, but yeah, of course. Uh, uh, the standard standard approach with a creature like this is uh, the creature needs to feel frustration from what it expected to happen, not happening. So it's going to try and smash, and a smash doesn't crush. Okay, cool. So it's unnatural, yeah. but not reality bending. Exactly. Yeah. Um, area of effect, I imagine, is just going to be a person. It's just, it's just geek. Okay, so that's mm-hmm. uh, that's six currently. Duration, instantaneous. We don't need it to last uh, long, unless you do want it to last and give yourself this big armored bur- uh, barrier. A, a few yeah. minutes is plus one to give you an idea. Yeah, sounds okay. good to me. So seven experience with the spell. Absolutely mastered. This is this is within Guy's realm. OK, Got so that means you need a seven 
Um, right. And I imagine you are def- uh, casting with grit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, because this is very much a grit spell. And then mm-hmm. an additional D4 plus any magic bonuses you have. Cool. Yep. And um, any strength bonuses I have, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If the great strength. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I I knew how good Guy was at this. So <laughs> Magic. So I roll with magic bonus. Right. Wait. When you roll magic, you roll both the stat. And a D4? Correct. Is that right? Mm-hmm. It yeah, does right. tell you if you click grit, I believe it asks you if it's magic. Yeah. It, it doesn't roll the D4 bonus. for you. Oh, interesting. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, gotcha. So you have to roll the D4 afterwards and then add the mm-hmm. bonus. Okay. All right, let me check something real quick then. Okay. So if you get the bonus from trained in, studied in, or master, you add that to both dice, right? You are only oh. rolling one die. No, oh, excuse me. When you're I, I apologize. Magic, you're rolling two dice, right? You are rolling your attribute. The D4 magic thing is just a flat extra variability. It doesn't get bonuses. So it, you'll have. Uh, oh, then what's the magic bonus for then? That is a bonus when casting magic. As oh, opposed... a bonus to that stat when you're casting magic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Correct. the stat bonus applies in non magical situations Correct. when you're rolling the stat, mm-hmm. and the magic bonus applies. In magical situations, when rolling the stat. Yes. Okay, cool. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, cool. And then the D4 isn't adjusted at all. So that, that bonus you get from those strengths applies then to the stat roll. Mm-hmm. Yep. Perfect. Great. Thank you. So you you likely have a plus two. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, wait. No, you're like maxed out. Gee is magic. a master of yeah, yeah, protection yeah. magic. Yeah. So Gee has a plus so six. Plus six. <laughs> yep. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason I was like, that's when I that, throw an edit at this stuff. 21, and then I roll the d4. All right. So I got a 22 versus, <laughs> you said, seven? Seven. seven. I think right. we did it. So 15 over? Yep. And what does uh, that say in the book? Uh, cool. Well, it caps out at 10, all right? Uh, oh, okay, but yes, cool. the uh, the character seems to cast a spell effortlessly. It looks like the character is just showing off like this spell, uh, like this is a spell the character could perform in their sleep. The spell functions perfectly. Um, 100%, cool. this is... <laughs> This is why I threw this at Ralph, because this is this is what he does. Um, does. And so there is the big I imagine the big hand smash, you know, overhand thing. And it smashes down and from Antimony's perspective uh, in the crowd, he is flattened into dust like the hand just slaps down flat on the floor. and then as the hand kind of lifts up, we see there is an indention within yeah. the the floor. And there's this small little like dome shape that, you know, little bubble person bubble that has now embedded in the floor. And Guy is in the bottom of it. So, you know, however tall Guy is about that within the floor, looking up at the 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 end, I think. He's five, six. OK, yeah. Uh, but just a like. Oh, we love a short king. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) there's some (laughs) uh, some (laughs) clapping from the uh, like, Okay, that's cool. Problem is now the the treant, you know, lifts hand, sees Mm -hmm. that there's still down there and just the two fisted coming down. Uh, It's time for it. Yep. But of course, a real, real little bit of um, flavor here. Mm -hmm. Uh, When that happens, uh, Gautier um, uh, leans his lance in the air and and says to the end, let that be a lesson to you, stupid wood. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there, there's probably some like groans from the, the crowd who are like, no, 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 don't antagonize the thing, man. He's, he's antagonizing him constantly. Oh, yeah. Gautier I, doesn't I, stop talking. As oh. soon as this happens, he's like, let me at him. Let me at him. I love but it. I must defend Bean. Right, he's like standing in front of the bag. Cern and squeaks from Bean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, up in the air, um, and uh, Antimony, feel free to, if, if there's anything that you are doing, uh, because while technically, yeah, it's a volunteer, yeah, <laughs> sit back, relax. I'm not even supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It yeah. works. Definitely it's concerned work. for 
Yeah, definitely concerned. But for Priscilla, mm-hmm. right. but we'll see how it goes. Just a broom. Daddy can buy me a new one. Very true. Um, yeah. Uh, so not that she has that attitude, but right. Um. Okay. I think like because she's easygoing, but like doesn't like failing things and right. that seems like a little mm. bit of a failure right mm. it's like okay mm, different tactic perhaps um and um i think she's going to like on her now a little bit wobbly broom um try to um yeah i think like a like a big blast of uh of wind mm-hmm. Ooh, cool. to like try and tip it over, make it off balance or whatever. Ooh, yeah. Sure. Okay. And we return to our spellcasty thing, uh, oh, yeah. which is this is very natural. Um, I actually no, I guess it would be unnatural because we were talking about wind yeah, inside. Yeah. Um, uh, area of effect. person bigger than a person smaller than a classroom yeah, i'm trying to yeah that's probably that one okay uh so that's eight instantaneous effect and have you tried to cast this spell before probably not um uh well actually let's go over this inexperience so you've never oh yeah you've at least read about it uh because that's sure. the witnesses you've seen someone else cast it or you read about it cast yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. times before so i think you're at a three so three uh eight eleven eleven okay what Thanks. magic are you using for that um i was thinking this was brains sure just sort of very um like smart tactical magic mm-hmm. that makes sense sure Unless it's magic a stamp yeah so i'm talking about um okay for those of you at home it is a-okay for them to use their best stat as long as there's it's as long as it's reasonable don't use flight to handle taking a hit that's dodging (laughs) (laughs) on d4 yeah yeah that's two on there so that's nine what was it 11 11 spend Um, some adversity tokens i will spend do you just need to be equal meet. it? Or, okay. Mm-hmm. I will I will meet it then. Okay. So I uh, two adversity token. Perfect. So that does mean that the threshold is zero. So um the the description from the book, because I love these. Character casts a spell, but just barely. The strain of this uh, casting spell is clear for everyone watching, and the spell might not function perfectly, but it gets the job done. Uh, yeah. oh, can I can I spend Gold one dress more in magic? If you would like, I would like to put the plus one in. Okay, so casting the spell, but not impressively. Uh, sure, it works, but the uh, but it's clear the character put serious effort into making it succeed. It functions as expected. More your vibe, and I definitely appreciate spending a token to to fix the yeah. flavor. Uh, I appreciate that well, um, specifically as it was like. The, the idea of it is to knock it over, right? Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. I didn't know if a zero was going to actually. Oh, no, I wasn't going to penalize that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, either way. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, the, the double fisted coming back, and that is it's coming down. Um, there. I, and I mean, we're talking, you know, bigger than a person. And I'm thinking of that of like the area on the end that is getting hit. So it's a big chunk of air that's flavor wise yeah i'm picturing like a like a more or less a small tornado appearing out of her wand i love that okay yeah Mm, sure and it just comes swinging down and just barrels forward um there's a couple like yells as people near the edge you know make way because it's i mean it's very much a timber situation as it's coming down and We'll jump to Ralph uh, with Guy's reaction. This either as it's coming down or has already fallen. You can kind of give some flavor here. Perfect. Oh, I was. Oh, um, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say the nature of 
doing that spell while flying <laughs> sends Priscilla like spinning backwards and <laughs> yeah the Newtonian reaction here yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's just like getting control of it after the spell's gone. Love that. That's so good. Uh, this is the kind of thing that Guy was hoping for. So he sees his opportunity. And his, his typical approach is um, withstand a blow and then find a way to subdue. And um, he learned in the course of uh, studying in defense against malicious magic that um, he was pretty effective with something called grounding dust. So... Um, he learned that he can pit his will against someone else by getting them into a position where they have to direct all of their energy into opposing a magical imposition of the will. So he was never really the best at um, at mental manipulation, but he was very good at making it so that someone had to exert mental effort against him in order to accomplish something. And he does it by having them, their mental energy be transferred into physical energy or vice versa. So their physical energy being transferred into mental energy and it being opposed to him. And he does this via grounding dust. So mm. as brain uh, grapple. In, exactly. Exactly. So as um as the int is falling over, um, he takes out a packet of grounding dust from the pouch at his hip and tosses it beneath the int so that when the int lands, it <laughs> explodes and dusts all over him. And so when the int and then he's gonna cast a spell, of course, so that when the int tries to get up or do anything else, he's going to have to contend against Guy's will in order to make his movements effective. All right. He is, of course, just going to have to grit it out. Yep. <laughs> I am right, absolutely cool. good with that. Yeah. And it's not right, even, awesome. I'm not doing damage. I'm just holding you down. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. That's what he realized. He's good at making sure he doesn't get hurt and stopping people from hurting others. All right. Uh, so this definitely gets into the reality bending level of magic. Yeah. Um, Makes sense to me. This is definitely a big target. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're at 10. Um, cool. It needs to last for a little bit. So mm -hmm. how long does that last? I mean, a few minutes is a long time. OK, right? cool. Yeah, no, I'm good with that. That's 11 cool. uh, experience with a spell. It sounds like this is something you've cast before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you think you've mastered this or? No, because there's been there have been creatures that have escaped, right? Um, I think he'll feel pretty confident about this if he's able to do it against an int. This right. is usually like a minotaur, right? Right. Or this thing's some drunk uh, definitely a bigger something. scale. All right. This is like the biggest thing he's ever tried to hold down through force of will. I imagine Conrad probably even knows that and it's like, oh yeah, this yeah. is the yeah. Okay, so that makes it a twelve. This is gonna be a challenge. Well, twelve. Okay, sounds good to me. Got to protect people. Oh, right. Let's see what happens when I roll that D4. Yes. So by six. Cool. Uh, which puts it into quite impressively. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyone watching, it looks like the spell is something that the character has mastered. Uh, the spell functions <laughs> uh, perfectly. Uh, it but it, it looks like it. <laughs> So yeah, slams down and there's definitely this big groaning and you can see like, I imagine just for the drama of it, this big yeah. ant hand reaching up to swat at Priscilla who's still kind of spinning and trying to, you know, re and all of a sudden the hand just like mid just stops and comes slamming down. There's kind of the, the sound of twig break kind of sound yeah. as it ch starts, you know, thrashing about and Conrad kind of stepping forward and it's like, OK, OK, all right, and enough of that. And just there's another quick spell. And, you know, similar to the the stuff that you guys are throwing around, it's like, OK, we're learning, we're experienced. This guy busts yeah. out the like, hi, I'm Merlin, you know, and just like <laughs> uh, the the grounding effect that you've got kind yeah. of twists and all of a sudden the thing starts to just levitate kind of held down and he just gives the and just feet first the whole and <laughs> yoink out through the portal and he closes yes. that um and then there's a moment where everyone's like okay is it safe okay and then the clapping and, and conrad okay so let's talk about what we saw there uh miss priscilla are you all right come on down um and like hands off 
the the bag with bean to you and, yeah. and picks up the broom and says, well, I'll take care of this. Kind of tucks it under his arm as he starts talking about what he did, what Priscilla did, talking about, OK, we got work. We got some teamwork here. We got high. We got low. Some doubling over. Nobody tried to take this thing on straight, you know, straight to the face because you can't do that. Um, it's bigger than you, you know, and, you know, rattles his great sword on the wall. It's like this thing isn't going to do anything to that. Uh, you got to think smart, you know, it goes off on to, you know, some tangents and pu starts pulling down, you know, chalkboards and starts discussing tactics and like, yep. Yeah. So there's this time 1945. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Um, and I think that may be where like even uh, antimony was like, oh, this is why people come to class. Like, yeah, you, you fight a monster and then you get monster fighting stories for the rest of the hour. Uh, uh, ooh, uh, but yes, that was great. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, but uh, we are, we are going to take our break there. That way we can come back and Craig can actually do something. <laughs> I'm, this is great. I'm, no, I'm, I'm sorry, Craig. No, but my notes were all like, oh, yeah. And so Antimony and Priscilla are here in, you know, PE gear. And I'm like, oh, no. Uh, so no, but, that's all fine. It was all good. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, so, yes, folks at home. Um, oh, also, in case anybody's wondering, yes, Ash is away. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, is having some good fun back at the old alma mater. Uh, but yes, we will return shortly. Uh, Twitch folks. Go touch grass, pet dogs, jumping jacks, move around, hydrate, dehydrate, uh, whatever you need to do. And uh, YouTube guys will be back in a second as Professor Lynx kind of finishes over going over class. Uh, again, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, at the end is OK again. A little bit of applause for our uh, volunteer Priscilla and uh, head of security. Well, not necessarily head of security, but I wonder what kind of title they give. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, uh, but our good, you know, friend of the school. Well, that, that is not even that. It. Hmm. But yes, maybe they just use the word custodian. Yeah. Actually, yeah, from I mean, the we'll, very we'll, we'll like home act and no more poop. Right. They probably deal with conventional waste differently. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe they use the word custodian mm -hmm. in its um, traditional sense. Right. The old Cleaning school messes. Say it again. Cleaning up messes. Yeah. And. and being the literal custodian. Yeah, I like that. I'm deep into Stellaris right now. So, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, uh, where is my? There we go. Uh, name generator. All right. Um, but, uh, you know, there's the, the little round of applause and, uh, you know, everybody is kind of dismissed. Um, <clears throat> I am assuming that there is a, a little bit of delay as uh, Conrad speaks with Priscilla about the broom and him getting it fixed up for her and, and returned back to her her dorms. Um, but other than that, has a little chat with D about, hey, will you be able to uh, perform the same, though, with a different subject? Uh, I believe it's. Yeah. Uh, on Wednesday. Yes. OK, fabulous. Um, and yeah, definitely sounds like you know he talks a little bit on about like, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to get into some of the you know more defensive things. And this is something that you particularly excel at and means I can wear sweatshirt. And, <laughs> like, you know, he's like, I can be loungy for a week. So <laughs> yeah. um, I don't have to wear the armor. Right. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, we. Uh... And before that happens, um, two things. So mm -hmm. I also mentioned that. Um, Gautier, of course, right? Um, uh, before he leaves, right, he bows to Bean in the bag again and says, my lady, right? And then says to Guillaume, my liege, and then walks out before Guy does. And then Guy turns to Priscilla and says, thank you for fighting with me today. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I feel like I didn't do that much, but um it was it was it was um kind of fun actually can be especially when you learn to trust people and you did do a lot because if you hadn't felled that int i would not have been able to ground it 
Mm. Why does your mouse talk like that? <laughs> there it is. The phrase. Why does your mouse talk? Hmm. Yours doesn't? No. Hmm. Well, is that a spell? Can I teach me to talk? Hmm. I maybe. I didn't teach Gautier to talk. Hmm. And then Gautier comes back in and says, My ears are burning. I don't know why we let Ralph in here. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say before we started the stream? Uh -huh. Nervous <laughs> excitement before seeing a Ralph character for the first time? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, uh, yeah, this is definitely my bag. Uh, so, um, uh, Guy kind of like pats his hand and then Gautier like, you know, steps away, right? Um, and covers his paws over his, uh, holds his paws over his little belly. Um, and, and Guy says, uh, he, he's always talked to me. The first time he did was when I realized that fear didn't always have to hold me back. Oh, okay. Uh, I have some suspicion that he might have the spirit of people who came before me. Hmm. I don't really know. But I just found being in a trash can. <laughs> you. You took an animal from a trash can and now you keep it in your bag. Well, I found him on the same day I got magic, so I figured it was a sign. Hmm. He had a bath before I put him in the bag. Don't worry. All right. Well, he's he's actually pretty clean. Okay. Rather fastidious. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. <laughs> it's just like it's all matter of fact. Like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in that case, let's let's talk more. Chiron, I think, might have some wisdom to share mm. about why there's a difference. Mm. It could also have to do with who you are and who you're realizing you can be because Gautier has acted in this way since I've known him. However, it seems that he's leaned into the persona much more as I've understood my own role. Hmm. She like squats down and leans down to talk to him. <laughs> cool. And he the uh, efforts uh, to appreciate being were very appreciated. And she like holds out her little pinky. Ooh. Oh, he he <laughs> um his left arm goes out, right? Mm -hmm. And he um uh gently cups the underside of your pinky and then kisses the <laughs> nail. <laughs> so it coming. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And he's, he's just like <laughs> blushes a little bit. Like he's very sweet. You're very sweet. <laughs> Merci. <laughs> it's like, oh no, I'm going to be late. And then like, right. Yeah. This is a, that's the everybody. end of the conversation. Just leaves. <laughs> yep. Bye. <laughs> Bag. Zoof. Cool. Uh, I love it. Uh, so yes, Chris is off to business divination. Uh, Cause we definitely yes. went over that one. Um, oh, yeah. Ash or uh, Haley is in charms numerology oh right that was magic math <laughs> yeah yes okay i definitely remember that um oh. yeah it's okay there's there's definitely it's an elective course and the people who decide to take it as an elective are a very certain type of people um yeah i love that um so we are going to uh step forward to uh that evening um uh because it appears that my uh my students have no particular classes um and i have determined that actually yeah there are no night classes there's clubs um mm -hmm. technically there's a whole extracurricular section but no everybody no we're we're gonna we're gonna not put night classes which honestly that's kind of fine they're students they they're, they're teenagers they gotta be able to sleep and relax sometimes come on well, I mean, Come on. I think I mentioned this last time, but like as an underclassman, you're supposed to have fewer classes. Oh, that's true. 
that's true. Uh, so. Yeah, we we just got to laugh at Haley for having yearbook and SGA and art. Wait, hang on. Is, <laughs> yeah, art is uh, Haley, but yeah. um, uh, but yes, that evening. Um, because again, you know, we we have the Hogwarts esque huge big supper stuff. Chiron is not in attendance. Mm. Um, and so we have uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. how many uh, times has this happened? Uh, well, actually, in uh, Guy's knowledge and memory, mm -hmm. never. Um, and but we do see uh, uh, Professor Gwendolyn Appletree, not Ooh. like in any particular way, the stated second in command. There's no hierarchy among the teachers, but she's the one. Us, notably the defense against malicious arts teacher uh mm -hmm. malicious magic excuse me uh but she's the one who's kind of taken taken the lead today and it's just a you know okay quick announcements a, there is absolutely no mention of the fact that chiron is not in attendance for dinner um which of course means people talk about it even more among the uh among the students um which uh, we'd mentioned with like antimony, uh, antimony. I have notes right here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> Priscilla and Haley, you know, sitting amongst uh, you know their tables. Um, but where does Guy eat? Uh, or is it because mm -hmm. he's on security? Is it more a staggered kind of thing? Yeah, um, he has. It's kind of weird for him, you know, used to sitting at the students' tables and he doesn't feel entirely appropriate sitting with all the faculty. I mean, mm -hmm. he would love to sit next to Professor Appletree. Right. right. And now, like, I imagine he's acquired some comfort with Professor Lynx. Mm -hmm. But I think he's instead, like, chosen a position apart from people because he's trying to figure out where he's where he's supposed to be, mm -hmm. where he eats. And he's able to to look around and make sure things are OK. OK. Gotcha. Yeah. So and I think especially if security has started up recently that it's mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we don't know where to put you guys because the, the faculty table has a chair mm -hmm. for each of these, you know, yeah. and it's not even like you have department heads. No, it's just this is the teacher. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there'd be like a T.A. table. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess so. For people like, that aren't quite yeah. faculty, but aren't exactly students. So maybe there's yeah. a halfway mm -hmm. part. Yeah, I guess it's true because you're going to have like the nurses and, you know, some of that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I guess it's true. Yeah. So, yeah. OK. But yeah. So there's definitely discussion as soon as like Professor Appletree sits down and tells everybody, oh, yeah, you know, everybody begin eating. And then the hubbub just kicks up like a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I don't know necessarily if if anybody has conversations with their neighbors, I don't know if Priscilla and Antimony are sitting near each other. I don't know if, you know, there's any of that, but that's just one of the like, okay, that happens as we lean into and head into the night. Um, well, Gautier is the first to speak up. <laughs> sure. And um, we're sitting at the table and I think people have observed that Gautier sits on the table politely and eats right next to Guillaume. Right. And it's like little mouse next for him. Right. Um homage, of course. Right. right? He's Naturally. Cheese. Yep. Maybe a little like thimble of wine. Um when he's been particularly good. Uh so <laughs> uh they're sitting at the table with people and, and Gautier, not in a particularly loud voice, but just observes and says, Where is Kiron? <laughs> and I think like around around Guy and Gautier, there's that definite conversation of that is literally what everybody is asking, uh, except um, actually from Guy's perspective, you know, kind of up mm -hmm. there towards the teachers, the little glance over and all the teachers are eating silently. Like there's no talking mm -hmm. amongst each other um, and they're not like avoiding eye contact with anybody. It's not that like guilty face into the food they're just not talking mm -hmm. amongst each other um you know it's just and it's it's very odd because you know there's a couple friendships between the teachers and they'll conversate and and 
and talk amongst themselves, but they're just like they're very distracted, I think is the, the best mm. way to put it. It's like, hmm. yeah, some so, some status quo has changed. I think for Priscilla, she's like. You know, eating with one hand and scribbling notes with the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like talking to herself. Um, and she's like I said, she's become kind of obsessed with healing potions and, and sickness remedies and stuff like that. So she's got like, you know, on her enchanted scroll, she's like scrolling through and like, you know, some like, you know, fourth century Chinese uh recipe it's just like she's like having to translate it's like devil's breath and mm -hmm. uh and and like okay i'm pretty sure this one is ginger um and then like just sort of casually remarks to herself it is way harder to concentrate in here tonight than <laughs> usual and like looks up and like <laughs> hmm Something's different. <laughs> so it's only then that. Yeah. That's awesome. I love Priscilla's to death. Uh. Um, and yeah, if like if uh, Antimony's like re relatively nearby. She might be one of the only people that Priscilla like, hey, what's going on? Yeah, uh, a, a thing I should know, and because I realize it may have been missed in kind of passing. While everybody else and uh, all the other students and the rumors and the talk have definitely been like people are doing like research and looking into stuff. Nobody has actually been told to do something the way the three of you were. Mm -hmm. Just to make that clear, there is that definite distinction between all the other stuff that Chiron was up to and has been nudging right. and looking into. And usually for uh, Antimony, just because she's like hard for people to get into a pigeonhole. Uh, she usually ends up seating wherever people haven't made arrangements to have no empty seats around them. Um, mm. But uh, well, Priscilla is also kind of focused. Maybe there's an empty chair there. So that's yeah, nobody wants to sit next to there. Priscilla because she doesn't talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and she's like regularly like is like chopping up potion ingredients while like with her other hand while she's eating. Mm. Right. And you don't want to get like, you know, like, you know, slime monster goo in your mashed potatoes or whatever. It's wonderful. So, uh, and when he says, um, in the absence of facts, people create stories. It seems to be what's going on tonight. The headmaster isn't here. Oh, that's what it is. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. I could tell something was different, but not what it was. Oh, is that what everyone's talking about? I wouldn't call it talking necessarily. It's just spinning wild theories. I don't understand why people do that. Oh, but that's what they're discussing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um. Hmm. You did great, by the way, today. Oh, this morning. Yeah. Thank you. Question. I tried my best. Did Priscilla even notice that antimony was in class? <laughs> Probably not. And so it like it takes her a second. She's like, <laughs> are you in that class? <laughs> no, but this morning they sent us all over there. Um, Transfiguration was canceled. So oh, they well, that's why there were more people there today. Like half the class were not in PE uniforms. Mm -hmm. Is it yeah. like that every day? <laughs> in what way? Uh, um, well, it seemed very much like a fight for your life. <laughs> Does that happen on a regular basis? Well, I don't always get chosen. Right, but <laughs> an event like that occurs regularly. Somebody gets chosen every time the class is on. Professor Lynx is There's about, a question mark there. Um, Hands-on experience. Okay. Um, you learn a lot from the things that don't kill you. Is what he says. 
True, but you'll learn nothing from the things that do. Nobody's died yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, Professor Lynx has been there for several decades now. No student has died in that class. I will say this. He is a good teacher, but an unfair adjudicator of what someone might have with them at any given moment. (laughs) (laughs) Because I had flasks of potions that I brought with me after my first week of that class, and he took them. Absolutely did. You will not have a protection, uh, a potion of protection against werewolves with you, he says. <laughs> that, that has been like this made- deep seated like mm-hmm. anger at the yeah. professor this entire time, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's been yeah. like for like months now. <laughs> like, love the class, but he did this one thing and I refuse to let it go. I love that. How was I to know? How was I to know that he was going to have a werewolf class? I had just been (laughs) doing a a bit of research on Wolfsbane and made the potion. Could have had that with me on any day. (laughs) So, so throw. Sorry, what were we talking about? (laughs) (laughs) So, quick, quick interjection here because I I need to know: was that like the only Uh, time Priscilla has like got in trouble in that class? Is that? He wasn't sure how, but clearly Priscilla had cheated and seen his notes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's still <laughs> baffled at how how you came prepared for this class. OK, sorry, Craig, please continue. <laughs> no, it's fine. So after trying to jump in a little bit, like as she's about to say something else, Priscilla goes on again about the potions. So after three times, she just sort of gives up. Um, and, it does eventually uh, be like, I'm sorry. What were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, and Char- and she's given up and moved on to the uh, uh, Chiron and being away. I, I, oh, I've right. noticed you've been working really hard. Well, that project. He, he, why would I not? It's an important project in a subject that I'm focused on. Um, is there anything I can do to help? Mm. I am glad you asked, Craig. Because now I cut to my notes <clears throat> from months ago. <laughs> um, Let's see. Like, without knowing what your notes are, um, Priscilla's main problem would be getting ingredients. Right? Mm-hmm. She can she can find lots of different things to try, but it if that's if if an ingredient is restricted to only upperclassmen or only faculty, then she's like, well, it better not be that one then. Right. <laughs> and just like moves on. Because she does not got to like break the rules to like steal something. Right, or... exactly. Uh, so there are two notes. Um, uh, technically, they were going to come from Haley and Priscilla, uh, but we're just going to bundle it together. And uh, so uh, there is some notes that uh, Haley found in a library and talking with some other classmen. There is a well-known, well, they had been a well-known herbalist and alchemist and specifically healer of like miracle healer from way back when, like, and for, for the school, like it's the pre Salem days, right? Because mm-hmm. the school was founded shortly after Salem and stuff like that, right. uh, of a one Kerrigan Rex. Um, mm-hmm. people have Kerrigan the King, uh, people have Queen, I guess, because it is female. Uh, she is, female. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, I guess it's true. Rex said, anyways, uh, Rex is Latin for King. Uh, but uh, she uh, has tons of notes like she passed away old age, you know, and and everyone's like, I mean, she she was done because she could have kept going. She had the knowledge. Right. And mm-hmm. just passed away. Uh, wasn't unexpected to those close to her. And the wealth of her knowledge is available. If somebody could actually crack the code of her notes. Nobody's ever done it. Um, and the joke, of course, is going around that. Well, we would have to actually speak to Kerrigan to figure it out. Mm. 
there you go, Craig. Uh, <laughs> the uh, eyebrows. Right. Um, <laughs> the, the other thing um, is that there are quite a few um, undocumented, because throwback to the necropolis space beneath the school, um, which is unmapped, and all attempts to map it are absolutely stymied and things it's, it's gotten to the point that i didn't bring this up before where it's like as soon as you make a map it gets rearranged um and oh, so yeah. it's now known especially we didn't get to talk about the necropolis club but uh it's one of those things nobody make a map talk about it share share your insights but as soon as somebody starts writing it down or drawing it then it starts to rearrange uh, and so Necropolis Club is this big oral history thing. And it's one of the things that the upperclassmen Whoa. passed down to underclassmen. It's like, OK, I know this route through here to dear to da 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 da. And that is what I know in my head. So we're going to go together. I'm take you there and then we're going to start learning some more stuff and then we're going to pass it on. But because it all has to be kept, they like they need more members, more people who can put it in their heads. Um and then a freshman shows up and ruins everything. Right. Oh, yeah. No, it's. How it's, am I it, supposed to remember this? Right. right and now. as soon as somebody <laughs> writes it. Somebody making a quick little note about it and the whole thing's up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and specifically, there, there have been times where, like, everybody's like, okay, and they go down, and the upperclassmen are like, hang on. No. And like it's a school wide student Three years of progress of right. gone. Well, and it's and it's 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 a literal witch hunt. Who wrote it yeah. down? And there's some poor freshman who just hadn't heard. And like Necropolis Club is the club everybody knows about. But somebody's like, eh, I don't care about this. And they wrote something down and just guys. Uh, and so it has been the well, ongoing that's... challenge. But there are definitely a number of uh, plants and uh, fa- uh flora and fauna down there that appear and disappear because of this. And there's all sorts of untold like possibilities with it. There's very kind of like the magical equivalent of like the Amazon rainforest. There's all sorts of shit that could be in there. We have no idea because we can't keep a map long enough and we can't keep a guide long enough. And so, uh, yeah, so there's, there's kind of those two possibilities out there of you know what what kind of shenanigans the the gang can get up to to try and you know take some novel approaches at trying to help chiron um so i think when he said this is sort of um uh, priscilla's project so she wouldn't volunteer but so just unless she feeds her off or something and then she can launch bed but She's just sort of making herself available to help in any way that. I mean, yeah. So I know, I mean, Priscilla, um, Priscilla's answer to the question is, I need help getting different ingredients. There's certain stuff that I'm not allowed to grab from the stores or whatever, or that we just don't have at school at all. If you give me a list, I can see what I can do. I I know we didn't. Um, hit it off i i'm not a not as big into something that you're really into that's okay um that's but it's because i i can't like i don't have that i don't have the ability to do with that anyone can do potions um, <laughs> yeah they say that <laughs> thank you Chris. yeah and then you know things bubble over and if things catch fire and that just means you had too much heat <laughs> sure, <laughs> but I always have too much or too little of something. Um, I, it just—it's uh, not something I've been really good at. So, I, and it's definitely not where my passion is. Um, I can see it is where yours is. So I'll, I'll do whatever I can to help. Hmm. But how so would if, you be if able you need to... a list of things? Well, I can figure things out. I'm pretty small people don't usually pay much attention to me and a quick question here because this is one of the other things from the previous episode how much has uh antimony kind of um uh kept up with her little miscreant troublemaker uh, students under the bleachers uh at thunderdome 
Uh, so she, she's easygoing. So if they like rope her into stuff, she's you know she's just a leaf in the wind and she'll go along. Sort of accidentally became a miscreant. I guess mm-hmm. would be how to. She's not like a participating. She doesn't she'll start it, but car. if everybody else is going right. along, yeah, sure, why not? It's a line from Guardians of the Galaxy like, oh. kept you around because you could fit into small places or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um. So yeah, the, if you can, Alice, I can. I can see what I can do. Okay, but um, try not to get yourself into trouble. Um, did you say Is that where we learn the most? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Isn't that when we learn the most? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Danger? Yes. Trouble? No. <laughs> well, danger is just a different word for trouble. Yeah. Adrenaline has horrifying effects on your memory. <laughs> so, if you want to actually learn something, you need to be in a calm and rational state. You didn't. Things did not seem calm or rational in that classroom today. They were close. Regardless, if you give me that list, I'll I'll see what I can find for you. Okay. And we'll she trying like, not to get in trouble. She like pulls out one of her like little. And she's already got a an itemized and just pad. like uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna say she's got like a little quick spell for like making copies. And it's just like clap two pages together. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah, and then it like has to unmirror itself. I love it. Here you go. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll you, see what I can you don't have to get all of them. It's a lot, I know. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's like in this like very cramped little <laughs> like probably 47 different ingredients, right? right? Bunch of different ingredients and because also the nature of potions, you don't necessarily need the exact ingredient, but you need something that has the same kind of uh, to borrow from mage, like the the same uh, idea behind it. So mm-hmm. like, yeah, OK, Wolfsbane. Yeah, you can kind of get away with a couple other different, uh, you know, ingredients that are thematically similar. Wolfsbane and Fox Club are not looking. OK. <laughs> <laughs> you think canine? No, that's not the important part. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um. Okay, she'll take the list and uh, go off to find her misprint associate. <laughs> I was going to say friends, but it's not really a friend relationship. No, it's a, it's a squad of people who are like, this sounds dumb. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Cool. Uh, hmm. And uh, I think she'll pitch it like a scavenger hunt. Is is there is there a special mystery prize at the end for whoever has the most? Yes. Perfect. <gasps> yeah. Um, the school skull I found. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that information you're telling us about that alchemist um, who died? Like general knowledge. Kerrigan Rex is very niche knowledge if you're into potions you know about Carrick and Rex uh it's like knowing about yeah, some yeah, of the um, un- unsolvable potions, yeah. mathematical equations like if you're into math mm. oh yeah we can talk about those uh but if you're not into math mm. unsolvable equations what <laughs> who cares um yeah so it's it's definitely a niche thing um all right so unleashing your little friend crew this is definitely a not a snap decision so you have all the time in the world. But yes, this is not a snap decision, so you can kind of plan out uh, what you're wanting to do. Um, So what uh, attribute are you going to use to try and set up this scavenger hunt idea? Um, I think I'm going for brains in that... um, 
Uh, so this will be going on for a while. So she's going to lean into the Chiron history that's been going on and say that this was a scavenger hunt list that Chiron gave to her. Um, and Chiron has offered a prize if we can get all the items on this list. Um, using brains to sort of uh, logic the way that this is definitely a thing that we need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't want anyone else to know about it because we want the prize. I like that. Not necessarily charming, but like giving some, I mean, they're, mm. they're, they're lies, mm -hmm. but you know, this logical approach. Okay, cool. Um, I like that. Okay. This is going to be, I mean, you're, you're dealing with your little miscreant pals. Um, so the idea of like doing something for the good of the school, eh, but for Chiron, okay, maybe, oh, but there's a prize in the end. Okay. Uh, so I think we're going to put this at an eight. Um, and the, the biggest thing for Antimony is that this is also plausible deniability. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I love it. Uh, so yeah, difficulty of eight. Um, now, because okay. this is pre-planned, A, you can take your die roll and half it, uh, or your die and take just the half value, uh, which I think yours is a D12. So you could take a six. And then uh, I don't know if you have any bonuses to brain. It doesn't no, really look just like. a magic one. OK, so you basically need to get two adversity tokens from either yourself or others who may be helping you out. I will use two adversity tokens. OK, cool. Um, and yeah. Simple as that. Um, and, hmm? is that is, this is a chance to in Antimony's mind, this is a chance to impress Priscilla. So I think I might actually just pull all three. Okay. Mercy tokens. All right. Does that make sense? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, better result. Right. Um, yeah, it is not necessarily... Motivated or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not necessarily a functional difference, which, in the, uh, like I said, similar with, uh, with Chris spending mm -hmm. the extra token to make it the spell work a little bit better. It's all narrative. Totally on board. I just want to be clear on that. Uh, so yes, um, you definitely um, get them on board for doing the scavenger hunt, obviously not necessarily. Oh yes. They go find all 47 ingredients. Uh, mm. But yeah, it's, it succeeds, but not impressively uh, any benefits they gain above and beyond the success should be quite limited if present at all. Um, so oh, that's if, if I just took the six. Uh, that's if you took that. That's the meeting the or that's the yeah, yeah. plus one over the requirement. Excuse me. OK, yep. that's fine. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely like and and notably because the other one is just barely this one is you definitely do, but it's not impressive. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, talking with the the you know crowd of underclassmen and upperclassmen and again we we cut to the stereotypical leather jackets and uh you know a, you a mix of goth grunge metal um and just non-mainstream folks especially because this is the upper crust new england school right mm -hmm. uh, and and they're anything but mainstream that's that's their vibe um and they kind of gather around their newest member and kind of <laughs> look at antimony and go wait really okay and like the the scroll comes out and they're they're looking at it and some somebody says oh yeah that's totally chiron's handwriting <laughs> <laughs> and like and they basically psych themselves into it where it's like oh this yeah. is totally this is totally real oh yeah look at this stuff this is impossible to get of course chiron would give uh, they start talking about the prize and like one-upping each other on what the prize might be must be right <laughs> and they just hype themselves up to it and antimony just kind of nudges that little domino and then steps back uh and yeah so the the discussion goes around and you know the the evening meal is and uh is you know kind of ending and you know night classes and extracurricular stuff is starting up and the group like starts you know copying down a couple pieces i'll get this i'll get this i'll get this and then they're like all right everybody be cool and they start to you wander <laughs> off as if they were doing absolutely nothing wrong at all uh gee you immediately red flag that group that you 
keep half an eye on. <laughs> they had a little meeting and now they're all walking super nonchalantly with their hands behind their backs, whistling right in different directions. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. And of course, Gautier um, says to him, you should uh, watch out for those. They're up to something. And the guy says, I know. Shh. <laughs> Why are we being quiet about the miscreants doing <laughs> things they should not do? Um, because if I want to figure it out, I don't want to let them know that I know. And then Gautier, like, Aw, strokes his chin a little bit, and he says, Oh, I see. Well, then. Very knightly behavior. Indeed. He <laughs> says, If you really want to help your own, maybe you should go after them now, no? Why wait? <laughs> he says, I know what you're trying to do. I thought the time for it. And Gautier says, <laughs> and he walks away with a little sack. <laughs> there, there's something satisfying as being a DM and being like, ah, yes, somebody else has to talk to themselves for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's great. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the the crew definitely start to, you know, meander off in different directions of note. Uh, and I'm going to come back to Craig. Uh, does Antimony actually go to try and find any items? Or is she like, I've set the, the things in motion and I'm going to kind of step back? I think she's going to be more like um, finding clues and giving hints on where to, where they might be able to find this kind of stuff. So uh, she's unassuming, right? So she sort of tried to wheedle bits and details out of uh, like some of the staff and professors and stuff mm -hmm. um, to see if she can get some information on where this kind of stuff might be located. And then she can feed that out to the crowd. Yes, so to, she's you know, she's the mastermind a, a who focus. doesn't, you know, doesn't take her hands out of her pockets. Oh, I'm not up to anything, but is, you know, kind of working in the background kind of thing. Yeah, but if there is a like a two person or more right. spot that we need to get into, she'd definitely be down to help with that. Gotcha. OK, um, so in my head, and feels, like in a heart, she's not really a miscreant. She doesn't have those skills. Mm -hmm. They right. do. So she's letting the, the people who do it well do it. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so and feel free to adjust the narrative here, either of you. But I definitely feel like we have the miscreants, you know, spreading off in different directions and antimony being like the last person there uh, or stepping away and not looking nonchalant. Uh, big air quotes there. Uh, not necessarily immediate ringleader vibes, but it's like. What is antimony doing? Uh, uh, OK. Yeah. And I I don't know. And this is this is me, you know, punting this over to, hey, let's get the players together here. But yeah, totally. I know where you're going with this. Yes, yeah, so I say I say then um when Guy sees that, um, as as you know, Gautier is kind of walking away, chewing on his, his fromage, mm -hmm. right? A uh, Guy reaches out a hand and turns him on an axis <laughs> and points him towards Antimony and says, See, if you wait, maybe you can get all the information from a direct source. And he goes, ah, well, well played. <laughs> so then Guy waits for, um, like, things to die down a little bit. Sure. Dinner kind of then... ends. People start going different directions, classes. Sure. Exactly. And he'll walk up to Antimony before she departs. Oh. Hello. Hello, Miss Incarn. He kind of stands there for a little bit. <laughs> so she's kind of awkward and says, uh, "Good evening," and then goes to move around you. <laughs> uh, I, I'm curious. You'd um, help me resolve a dispute between myself and my friend, and um, he holds up Gautier in his palm, and he says, uh, "Gautier here is." Uh, a little suspicious of the kinds of conversations that might have happened during dinner. And I suggested that, hey, you know, people get up to all kinds of things in the school, and it's not necessarily my business unless they're 
endangering themselves. But Gautier always looking after everyone, perhaps to an extreme degree, says that sometimes it's good to intervene before something happens, not necessarily after it has. Um, it's a cured affair, and she gives a little curtsy. <laughs> You're talking like some of the other people do around here. You're like coaching everything in fancy words and just say what you need. All right. Fair enough. Well, I was trying not to out you. Um, you're running around with people who look like they're up to no good. What are you doing? Oh, I'm not I'm not really with them. I just kind of fell in with them. Yeah, didn't look like that from my perspective. Well, they, I thought they might be useful for um, a project that that uh, Chiron sort of gave us. Yeah, did Chiron give you that project? Yes. Yeah, what project? Well, not that? not me exactly. He gave the the project to Isabel. Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. Who's Isabel? Or not Isabel. Sorry, Priscilla. Still. <laughs> yeah. Give the project to Priscilla. Flashlight mm-hmm. comes. Out. Who's Isabel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's too many damn Isabels in Occultus Anonymous. <laughs> Isabel Gisela Priscilla. <clears throat> what project is that exactly? And why does it involve a bunch of people who are up to no good? Well, they're not up to they're good. They're up to good. They're trying to help find a cure for Chiron. Yeah. Well, let me put it bluntly. Or no, you would say you say I'll, I'll speak directly as you asked. That crew, as a consequence of them trying to get away from whatever it is going on in their life, causes problems from time to time, okay? Whenever they're doing something, it's always because it plays into their desire to cause problems. So I'm worried, you're telling me, that you asked them to help you work on a project that our headmaster gave to Priscilla. That's right. And it's because no, people make it's because people make bad choices doesn't mean that you can't take that same energy and focus it on something good. All right. Please explain to me how you're focusing their bad energy on something good. Um Scylla needs some ingredients to work on the, the cure for Chiron that he asked her to make. Um she's been having trouble getting them, so I said I would get them for her. Um, okay. And those folks are just helping me gather those supplies. Are they getting those supplies in a way that doesn't break the rules? I honestly don't know. <laughs> um, I will go ahead. I, have... and, I will interject something real quick about the list of ingredients, because Chris came up with the idea that there's a huge list. I'm absolutely loving that. The one thing I will mention is that all the ingredients in there are definitely OK for students to have and okay, cool. they are um like they're they're safe ingredients right the issue here is underclassmen aren't allowed to right. get many of them and in some cases um they're only allowed to the upperclassmen may only be allowed to get them in like small in quantities class. oh also mm-hmm. yeah that's actually mm-hmm. true too because i mean some of the students are going to be doing you know the the class uh, the the projects and potion stuff not in class, the homework thing or the right. take home test kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's just that Priscilla specifically is not able to get these. But she's punching so far above her weight class. Correct. She's like, I'm on, you know, grade six potions and like oh, in my yeah. second year. Mm-hmm. And oh, this is really inconvenient that I can't have all these things that right. I'm yeah. perfectly capable of dealing with. Correct. Uh, yes. I was going to say that she like absentmindedly basically just walks into this conversation as she's going to Ooh. leave. Um, and she's like, got her head down in her bag, like talking to Bean. And uh, like, and it's just like, you know, whatever fluff conversation with Bean. Like, you know, did you get enough? Yeah, I thought the carrots were really good tonight. You're right. Um, and just like, probably, I'm going to say just walk smack into the back of uh, of Gee. <laughs> just like, awesome. oh. Little squeak. Of, oh, I am so sorry. Little squeak from Bean from within the bag. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, uh, Guy steps like, out. Peeks back around you. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, I didn't it's see okay. you. Hi, Antimony. Well, uh, it is a great coincidence that you've arrived. This we were just talking about you. Why? <laughs> well, the project that Chiron gave you. and It's a secret, secret project. project. Oh, secret project. How do you know about it? I think I just told you about project. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, okay. It's, I mean, you're part of the faculty. It's probably fine. I assume they know more about what's going on than I do. They might. You know, there's something I learned when I was a student, which is that it can be really intimidating to want to trust the people that are teaching you, but they often do have your best interests at heart. And I, for one, very much care about Chiron. So... If there's something you're doing to try and help him, he is in a state that he's not sharing with other people. I'd very much like to know about it. Well, we shouldn't really talk about Chiron. It's his. Did I miss something? Sure. I don't think so. <laughs> there, there seems to be a. And I'm not good at these things, but is there a, a someone? Are you mad at her? Did you do something wrong? <laughs> I explicitly that told you not gear, to. And that gear clicks in Anthony's head. Are you mad at me? No. I'm concerned. I don't have any reason to be mad at you. What did she do? What did you do? I told you not to break any of the rules. I haven't broken any rules. She hasn't broken any rules. She wouldn't lie to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Guy shakes his head and says, you're right. She hasn't technically broken any rules. And there isn't any demonstration that anyone has broken any rules that I know about. I really observed something that suggested that someone might be breaking rules in order to help you with your project. And although I'm new to this, I know a little bit about breaking rules and what the consequences are. What if those rules don't make any sense? Fair enough. They're written what for rules? a reason, Antimony. What, but what's that reason? Everything on that list is perfectly safe for us to work with, right? Perfectly safe for me to work with because I'm talented. <laughs> sure, Aaron. but you can't because of an arbitrary decision about what class level you're at. Hmm. A rule doesn't make yes, sense. But it doesn't account rule for shouldn't, somebody rule shouldn't be written around the exception. We're wizards. Just because I'm inconvenienced, <laughs> just because I'm inconvenienced, doesn't mean that a rule isn't a good rule. And you know, the average. You know, and she'll just like point to someone she doesn't know at all. Doesn't mean that that person should be dealing with fire slug slime. <laughs> <laughs> and like, um, doesn't realize that she just said it loud enough to like right, that, totally said, insult this said, person. Said person turns and gives you a. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come <laughs> the on, hell, bro. Man. I that yesterday, bro. So she's so she smiles and she shakes her head um, and like. Um, you, you've internalized the idea. You should have limits, absolutely. And Priscilla should have limits based on Priscilla's skills and knowledge and abilities. Why should you be held to the limits of an underclassman who just joined and you know, can't find their wand with a map and a and a guide? You don't need to be bound by those rules because they're not making you safer. They're just impeding your progress. They're impeding your ability to advance and improve. Isn't that right? Mr. Cordifair? I think that is a valid argument. I will offer a corollary to it, which is that we all want to grow, and sometimes the established rules are designed to protect 
the vast majority instead of the exceptions, and they can get in the way of our own growth. The challenge is to recognize that when we are relatively inexperienced, we don't have the best understanding of whether or not a limitation is limiting our growth or is a necessarily is a necessary protection. So how do you know for sure, Ms. Inkhart, that your perception of the rules is accurate? You might think differently if you were in my position. Uh, I do want to interject here because uh, this is all mm-hmm. terrific and I love it. Meanwhile, in the background, uh, storyteller brain is going. Um, has Priscilla actually asked Professor Farbridge about getting any of these ingredients? Or has that's it where I was going next? Huh? That's Absolutely where I was going not. Next. Okay, perfect. Nope, that's great. Carry on. So um, I'm not trying to steamroll, right? Like he isn't, mm-hmm. you know, lecturing the people. So there's a question he wants to ask, but he just stated something in response to, to antimony and this is a conversation. So I'm going to wait. So who is able to make those judgments? Do you know what Priscilla can do? I don't. You know, I Maybe can your teacher would decently and throw wind out of my wand. That you can. But I don't think that determines whether or not you're best suited to use these ingredients, does it? No. Just those are that's two things that you know about me. What I can Oh, do. that's a good point. I, I should amend what I said. This is one thing I know. I'd be happy to have Priscilla by my side if I ever had to fight an int again. And if I ever need a potion, Priscilla would be the person I come to ask. Hmm. She has a passion for it, and she puts a lot of effort into it. All right. So that's what I know. Well, then, how about this? This role is new for me and for the school. And as the custodian, I'm supposed to solve problems and clean up messes, whatever form they take. And it seems like the problem here is a skilled student is having trouble gaining access to things that might help her help the headmaster. That sounds like a problem a custodian could clear up. It does. So maybe with my difference in position, I might be able to get those ingredients for you. And then we don't have to involve anybody else being tempted to break rules that might get them in more trouble than it's worth. Sounds good to me. I still think I missed something here. <laughs> uh, it's true, because Priscilla has no idea still about the pr- yeah. miscreants go- getting yeah, stuff. He, um, he's not niching on And somebody would explain it. And somebody would explain it. Mr. Kurt Affair is uh, laboring under um, prejudices about the activities of certain people and the choices they've made in the past as an indicator of their future behavior. Yeah. Oh, your weird mm. burnout friends. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> well, uh, just as a little bit of okay, just just as a little bit of um, information for you, Ms. Inghart, I'd like uh, for you to know that I know a little bit about chafing under the yoke of status and lineage. I can make and a potion know... for that. <laughs> he acts Maybe about, and he's like, well, all right. <laughs> I could have used like she you. says it before you get through the rest of it. It's right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I was actually one of those one of my things that I um I ended up with the other day. I had an experiment. Um, An anti chafing potion or cream. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds good to me. I'll keep that in mind. Um, just you- real quick. Yeah, um, he's, he just says, um, I, I know a little bit about chafing under the yoke of lineage and expectation. So um, when I suggest that those students might make decisions that they ultimately regret. It's um, born out of an understanding of what their experience might be like, not just based on a prejudice of who they are as people. Okay. Uh, yeah, if, um, if you'd like. And then he holds out his hand. I can help you. Uh, and Tony would hand the note over. I can just make you another copy. Oh. 
Clap. Clap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing. They teach that now in uh, no poop class. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. For those of you who weren't here, no poop class was Ralph's idea. Yeah. <laughs> At least the name. Home egg. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? About anything other than how not to poop anymore, right? right? <laughs> we have magic. I don't want to poop. There are more things to talk about than not pooping. I also don't want to poop. I hate pooping. <laughs> Fine. Okay. All right. We'll go I'm over that <laughs> day one. Yeah. Uh, to uh, to move things along. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it, it, it's all good. I, just because I noticed the time. Um, yeah. And because I okay. do want to end this with uh, the next step. Um, Makes sense. Uh, the the trio, well, plus familiars, um, of you make your way up to uh, the potions storeroom, right? Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. Adjacent to the potions class. Um, and <laughs> I imagine as you guys are walking by, there's a couple of these mystery and hoodlums are <laughs> leaning around and looking they see gee and they're, and they're just gone um and but uh you make your way over to the you know the storeroom which um uh, is is fairly secure uh it's got one of those um oh my gosh uh the double doors what do you call them uh doors huh you, you're talking about the ones that swing on mm, both no um the double hinge where or? it's uh you have a half half door whatever it is uh, oh no, gotcha sure. yeah, yeah it's yeah, chemical dispensary where you have one door it's at the bottom mm-hmm. and it's, it's split in half yeah, yeah. So right. open. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. yeah. uh that's and there is a super bored <laughs> upperclassman mm-hmm. sitting there with like uh you know, notepad you know some other different stuff for students checking out ingredients um uh, on the way over there you can see passing the actual potion classroom. Professor uh, Farbridge is in there with, um, for Priscilla especially, but I think you would also recognize one of the more complex and elaborate potion brewing setups that you have Mm -hmm. ever seen. Uh, Mm. You know, decanters on, you know, decanters and spiral everything. And it's just, it's Willy Wonka- Priscilla has instantly forgotten why we came here and just keeps, keeps walking <laughs> towards the setup. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. and, and specifically, because in my imagining, we have like the storeroom that's in mm. um, that like leads out to the hallway. But then it also has another door into the potion room. Just that way, people don't necessarily have right. to go into the classroom. Um, so you're passing the potion room, like, you know, looking in the right. window and can see all that. But and you head in and. Uh, mm-hmm. in that case okay cool that yeah, she just instantly is like mm-hmm. Ooh, what's going on there right cool uh, um, uh, for the other two are you guys going to like oh, we're just she's doing her thing we're gonna get the ingredients yeah okay cool uh, so yeah inside That's I was just kind of caught in Gilm's week, or, yeah mm-hmm. guys wait cool uh, so yes Professor Farbridge like looks up at the door like there's a momentary glare of like Somebody just entered without knocking. It's a student at Priscilla. Perfect. Come here. <laughs> and like you are swept into like he needs another pair of hands that he is confident in. Um, All right. As he keeps moving through stuff and the number of decanters, chemicals like potions usually use like six to ten different ingredients depending on what stage you're in and stuff like this and this guy looks like he's juggling like 13 different active ingredients right now with like a array of other stuff ready to be added in like this is way too much and immediately he's like okay i need you to start doing this and starts giving you directions and i need a roll um um uh i am good with either just for sheer speed of flight or brains. Um, I know, I think both of those are your Those are stats. my two best, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I, I do not care which you pick, but the um, DC will be. Is it a magic or is it a? Stat? This is this is uh, because you are not casting any magic. This is literally cool. just basically, can you keep up with the steps and uh, things that he needs from you, basically? 
Uh, I'm going to do it with flight of like actually being. I'm assuming that they would have different numbers, right? Mm -hmm. They do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, so yeah, flight is a straight up seven. Okay. Uh, yeah. All it is is just keeping up with directions. Um, you're not trying to anticipate him or anything like that. What did you roll? Oh, no, that is a three. Yeah, okay. Good news is. Oh, do you still have three? I have three. <laughs> Love it. Okay, yeah. Okay, perfect. This is absolutely something she would push herself right. really, really I'm hard on. I'm going to do right? this, yeah. yeah for sure. Uh, and so there's a little bit of kind of stumbling over each other and moving past, but eventually it's it's a solid like 15 minutes of you guys kind of dancing around each other and like something starts to catch fire and he's pointing out, okay, did you just swap that out with this? And you're just being the, the other pair of hands that mm -hmm. not, not quite, you know, empty, empty mind, no thoughts <laughs> level of, uh, you know, but you can, you know what you are doing and just following directions. Um, because of that, you're not, uh, able to figure out exactly what he's doing. Um, yeah. But when all is said and done, uh, Guy and Antimony, you know, probably kind of able to look in his 15 minutes. You guys have a sachet of all these different ingredients and stuff like that um, and can look in and see the window. And uh, Professor Farbridge is basically decanting. Actually, let's let's be let's be real. This is witch school scooping out from a cauldron, right? Because uh, mm. <laughs> all potions end in the cauldron, one mm -hmm. way or another. However you got there, that's where it ends. It's just how it works, right? Come on now. Part and, of the base magic of how, how game. magic works, right? Yeah, that game's great. Which game? It's real good. Potion, potion maker? maker. Oh yes, yes, yeah. So good. Potion craft. Potion, potion craft. craft. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. craft, yeah. Very very good game. Highly recommend. Uh, not add. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I think there's a demo too. So anyways, uh, but yeah, and scooping this out and it is a like very, very like all is said and done. Like it doesn't fill half the ladle kind of thing um, mm -hmm. pours into test tube beaker, you know, not like a big full swig potion, but like this test tube mm -hmm. little beaker uh, corks it and holds it up and the potion is i mean it is all sorts of shimmery and very kind of uh like rainbow glitter going on this is like classic high fantasy healing potion mm. and uh oh, okay right uh, i was gonna say can i like i was gonna ask if i could make a roll to train at just mm -hmm. now reflecting on what i've done trying gotcha. to figure it out yeah it's and, like and just as a like showy bit of like, did we just make this? Oh, dude, yeah, yeah uh, I, I did that. Yeah, let's get a let's get a uh, That's cool let's get a brain check in there, um, and because you're trying to like the actual potion, because I for free I can definitely give you that it is a healing potion, right? Yeah, um, no, like a specific like you know, yeah. So this, that this person's theory on you know, yeah, that. Actually, yeah, I think that's a 10. Okay. Yeah. An impressive, but expected, let's go. Expected as, yeah, skilled at it. Yeah. Let's yeah. yeah. Uh, so 100% uh, rattling off, you know, name of, you know, so and so's, you know, specific draught of whatever. Um, and Professor Farbridge kind of turns his head and looks at you and goes, You recognize that from the couple of ingredients and what it looks like? The end result? Yes. <laughs> because I just told you what it was and then I'm correct. Am I not? It, 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 yes, you are correct. That's. You continue to impress. Um, and but. Pockets pockets the potion smiles at you and says, don't you have other places to be, though? <laughs> and like it's it's very like not not in any way mad but a yes i was working on a thing i appreciate your help but i can't let you know what i'm doing with this 
you know, and it's very uh, an adult has a secret like mm. red flag. Kids, kids know it. Pick it up. Yeah. Is that for Chiron? I'm trying to think how he would handle this. Because we talked about him being very like Doc Brown kind of vibes, right? Yeah. Cookie, yeah. So, yeah. So I very, yeah, there's this very eccentric. Why would you, why would you think Whoa, that's for, for the head best? Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that you're over exaggerating a little bit. And, um, well, it's just that I've been, and she'll like pull out her scroll of like all her ideas. <laughs> kind of leans in and I imagine like there's a, this very protective kind of like potion over here what do you what, what, what do you oh oh well, the headmaster asked me to I think he might have meant it as a joke but also a challenge and I think he kind of turns and looks over towards like the window uh, where Guy and Antimo I'm suggesting Gee, okay, perfect. Yeah. So is there a little wiggle? And Gee, are you looking in the window as well, or are you just kind of more? Yeah, I'm looking in the window. Okay. <laughs> he looks over, looks at Priscilla, Antimony, and then just kind of does a little. Oh my know. gosh, I left them. They were helping <laughs> me, and I just ran away. I'm sorry. <laughs> as you guys like walk in, uh, okay. and Professor Farbridge kind of nods and I says. Think- if I can say quickly, I think um, Guy and Professor Farbridge had a pretty good relationship. I imagine so. <laughs> yeah, Guy, Guy was OK at potions. His interest is in healing and protective, but sure. He feels like using it in the moment is, is I feel like anybody that gets it. into scrappy kind of magic needs to be good at potions for. Yeah. You know, if nothing you know. else, you got to have the backup swig <laughs> yeah. potion. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, so, or at least know someone who is. Right. right. Uh, and so he nods and looks OK and says. Okay, and you can see him you know, the very obviously putting a puzzle together and says. Chiron suggested that he was getting additional help, but. I wasn't expecting students or he's under been asking everyone to do. He's been asking everyone to do a bunch of things. Research, yes, but are you making potions well i'm trying to except i haven't been able to get all the re- ingredients they need because they're reserved for upperclassmen until now build a bag <laughs> right oh that was efficient indeed and you can watch as like pr- the professor is going back and forth between being kind of irritated that chiron went to a student for this but then also like well, of all the students to go to, Priscilla is the one to make a potion. Um, and he nods and goes, OK. And like looks at Antimony and Priscilla and like you can see he's like, oh, good. They're they're making friends. Uh, <laughs> and then looks over <laughs> to Guy and goes. Um, not that I have any problem with it, but how did you get roped into this? Making sure people don't get into trouble is avoidable. OK. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, um, kind of looks over to the potion contraption and <sighs> sit down, walks over to the, uh, the door, pulls it closed, pulls the, the, you know, shutter down, throws a little ward against eavesdropping, flips a couple locks on it, <laughs> like f- the full security thing and comes back mm. over to, you know, the three of you whether you actually sat or not, uh, and says, all right, I tell you this in complete confidence. I'm the only one who Chiron has, well, reverting. I'm telling you this in confidence. Chiron and I have been working on this, and I guess he's involved you, so I'm willing to speak on this. But if I find out other students are talking about this, I will know who is responsible and his eyes move from underclassmen then up to Guy, like including in this, like nobody better hear, you know, nobody, nobody better be talking about this. I don't really have any friends to talk to about it. So you're pretty much safe with me. 
<laughs> and like the sadness in his face, he's like, oh, yes, I too was that student. Uh, but uh, not- there's no sadness in Priscilla's voice. About right, it. It's of just course. a matter of fact, like, <laughs> I don't hang out with anybody. Um, I imagine there's possibly mention of, you know, Haley being involved just so mm-hmm. we can kind of cover that for later. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, and he says. The headmaster is well has been afflicted by some nature of curse or toxin that we cannot understand uh, Mm. of note. um, uh, You may have noticed that Chiron is a centaur Uh, and that makes (laughs) right. Um, that makes all these years. <laughs> uh, that makes uh, oh my gosh, what is the word? That makes diagnosing the magical cause a little bit more difficult than if he were human, because we have quite a lot of human studies. Centaur are a rare and unfortunately dying breed, and uh, we do and not this have. Is when- Gautier chimes in and he says, yes, but the centaurs are more like a horse. Yes, I know how to take care of the horses. I might be able to lead, lend uh, some a, a, a gentle like hand placed on yeah. Gautier. Yeah. He, <laughs> he, 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 he like, didn't expect him to be out and like, grabs him and puts him in the capsule and puts him in the bag. Like, all right, hang on. <laughs> you <can> get... <laughs> um, this is not the time. Because of his centaur anatomy um there is some concerns um the potion as you have so well identified has slowed the symptoms you may have noticed that over the past few months he has been getting worse and it is all i can do motioning at the potion uh contraption to keep him more or less stable um, as far as I'm aware, Chiron has not made his situation known outside of the school, uh, for concerns that there may be outside play affecting him and that others may take advantage and try to remove him from his seat, install a new headmaster. Um, there are politics involved you know definitely makes a face at that like he's very much like why can't i just make potions and teach potions but now (laughs) i'm involved in this crap um so i am going to guess that is why he has students working on this and uh if you all are working on potions and other students are doing other research don't know what he's up to, but I suspect that is. He him. doesn't know what was he poisoned or attacked or. Well, therein is the rub. There are just doesn't know. Four months of hmm. Chiron's memory missing over this summer break. Oh. He has no knowledge of he he remembers commencement speeches last year bidding everybody a good break and time away and excited for everybody to come back and his next memory is that first day when he welcomed everybody and kind of nods to priscilla uh because priscilla is the youngest right because i think Mm -hmm. she's youngest by a year um you know, to their first year of school or well back to school. Yeah. And he has several months of missing memories um, and looks to Guy and says the <laughs> uh, the teachers know of this. No other faculty mm. know of this. So we do not know. Can I, mm-hmm. can I ask a question about that particular mm-hmm. one thing that's taught in defense against malicious magic? is remedies 
or mind tempering, tampering. Sorry. Mm -hmm. What did Professor Appletree say about recovering his memories? Both Professor Appletree and I, all attempts we have made to recover his memories, to revisit them, divinations is coming up empty. It is a concern. Mm. Um, at this point, there are a few experts outside of the school that we could speak with, but eventually there may be some issues that, uh, well, with letting anybody outside the school know. We do not know if there is some mm nefarious plot or if this yeah. is memory loss is related he had plans to return home to Greece we have no idea if he ever went because of course it's not like there's a chartered plane to, for centaurs right magic we are wizards hmm. mm -hmm. so this is the ongoing issue for the past couple months. Well, I think if he has any chance of breaking this curse or finding a solution, Priscilla is going to be a help. If there's anybody I could trust to brew a novel new potion, it'd be her. No pressure, but there are it other... Seems like you have a good setup for doing so. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> if getting ingredients is going to be an issue, then I will resolve that post-haste. Hmm. Look, sorry, it looked like Craig was going to chime in and say something there. So, okay. But, yes, we will. I would never have thought to just ask. <laughs> I'm glad you were dedicated enough to focus on the problem ahead of you and to keep Chiron's secret. Mm hmm. I guess at this point, it's become a rapidly. Unkempt, unkept secret. And he leans down to, um, <laughs> to, to antimony and, and says, trying to uh, stop doing what they're doing. I couldn't hear that. Oh, oh, he, he okay, yeah, I should stage whisper. Sorry. Uh, Guy whispers to antimony, you might want to get them to, you know, stop doing what they're doing. Oh, sure, there's no need now. <laughs> As I, I imagine, actually, yeah, it's nine o'clock. We we have the like the this uh uh this reveal, and we have the camera panning, and we have a line of miscreant uh you know students out you know like lining up to get a couple ingredients here and there, <laughs> and while like they're getting ingredients, the music playing is. <laughs> Right. There's there's a couple, you know, underclassmen or smaller ones who are like trying to sneak in and like while the, you know, the guy's back is turning, reaching in, grabbing a thing. It's like this whole thing is about to it's like, hang on, guys. Um, um, how did you get them to agree to help you? I told them I was a scavenger hunt. <laughs> sort of is. Hmm. What what is their prize? I may have implied that there was a an undeclared prize at the end if they were successful. And do you have a suitable prize for them? Not yet. That's a problem for tomorrow, Antimony. 
<laughs> my name is Priscilla. <laughs> Well, it's my problem to solve. Oh, you mean the the antimony of tomorrow? I see. Yeah, grammar was unclear. <laughs> oh. uh, because, <laughs> oh yes, Priscilla, the Oxford comma girl. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Everybody You're Oxford, comma. Oxford comma. Yeah, uh, yeah. I would just say she she offers to like make something fun. As the potion, like a potion or, uh, you know, a fucking magic candy or something like that. Dude, that would, that I hadn't thought weird. about that. But yeah, how many like top tier potion makers are like, fuck this. I'm going into magic candy. Willy Wonka, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hershey. Like Willy Wonka, yeah. 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Love that. Um, uh, that would be great. And uh, it would be something off of my plate. And you'll have spare ingredients to, to do it with. So cool. I'm gonna mm. Pump the brakes hard r- right now. Uh, uh, this 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 is much more of what I was anticipating. Uh, we didn't quite sneak around school quite the way I thought. It was like, oh, yeah, we're going to have the miscreants do it. I'm like, yep, that's fair. Yep. <laughs> I know I kind of nudged it anyways, but um Oh, good stuff. And now we, we get the, the reveal of, OK, a little bit more of what's going on. And uh, yeah, we we'll will come back to it at some point in the future. And yep. Mm-hmm. And little bits and pieces. I have much better notes written for myself for the future. So it'd be much easier to pick this up. And yes, now we also have where Guy comes in as uh, the, the the faculty who can move about and uh after dark and yes, gets things that students can't get and also speak with teachers on a level that the students normally wouldn't be able to. Um, and so has, has a paycheck. Also has a paycheck because things may lead outside of school, uh, mm-hmm. which is another thing I'm very excited for. Uh, everybody pile into, does Guy drive? Hmm. Oh, oh man, motorcycle. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Cycle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. No, we haven't quite hit cool teacher in a leather jacket. Everybody who's watched Boy yeah, Meets World, so you close. know exactly who I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, but, yeah. I imagine Goche would insist on a sidecar, though. Oh, definitely. Well, yeah. is, is it a sidecar? It's like attached. It's like attached to the handlebars, though. Right. That's what I was gonna say. It's up front, or that, or yeah, is on the example. helmet. Well, actually, no. You wouldn't yeah. put them on the helmet. That sounds like a bad idea. Because I mean, the point of a helmet oh. is to get hit. Yeah, you wouldn't want to put them there. But the handlebars, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, definitely. He's like right in the center of the handlebars. With so handlebars connected to the stem. Yep. Steering mm-hmm. column. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, he's so he can open it up. Teeth on the wind on his fur. Uh. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Uh, thank you all for joining us for another episode of Kids on Brooms. Uh, I guess next time I'm, we're going to be like obligated to make sure that it's the whole crew here uh, instead of doing it when we just got, you know, one person out. Um, though I guess that wasn't our intention the first time around. Um, no, it wasn't. No. Uh, Ruff had Ruff was being good friend. I remember that. Um, so and we appreciate that. Uh, much as we stand the officer comma, we also stand being good friend. Uh, you are all our good friends and we invite you to come hang out at our house not really it's it's discord uh, www.yeetinto.space and stuff come on real good time I should we should create a uh, hammock channel and just like all right good vibes only what's going on let's hang out oh, that sounds yeah. good yeah mm. I think it's but a I guess we alternative have... to the, the bathtub twitch streams or the hot tub twitch streams yeah so. just hammock hammock streams yeah yeah mm-hmm uh anyways yes come by discord um it is not zany but it is a little silly uh it is okay let your hair down come relax um good vibes only um we do try and keep a lot of the the real world stuff out it's a place where you can just kind of come relax talk about stuff you're excited about talk about music your pets uh our shows if you want uh, you talk want about to. the stuff that you're watching uh, and playing in and stuff like that. We, we highly, highly appreciate that kind of stuff. Um, uh, if you want to support us monetarily, that's patreon.com slash occultist anonymous or www.staylucky.club. Um, and we do uh, appreciate that uh, financial support uh, lets us do some extra stuff. Um, 
send new computers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, different things like that. Um, we greatly appreciate anything you do. Um, and we should have new art in the next month or two. We got to figure out where we're where, where we are with Mage the Awakening. Is there may be another time skip coming soon and we may come back to older new art wiser question mark uh, my yeah. i think demonstrably less wise technically speaking. <laughs> yeah the average is coming down that's fair but contrary yeah, Ralph, the Ralph average is trying. might stay the same yeah uh, yeah <laughs> well he Glenn, he's at Glenn nine to keep that average high no actually he's, he's 10. 10 yeah he's, he's at, at 10. 10 the average could only go down from here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I would just say the same, same, but the standard deviation is yeah, the standard deviation right. is definitely increasing. That's true. Yes, uh, indeed. Um, so yeah, we may come back with some updated art, Nimbus stuff, and things like that. Um but in a small little shout out here to Brenna. Yeah. Love love their art. They're terrific. If you're also looking for awesome art, definitely go uh check them out um on Twitter and uh links in the comment section or not comment section the description highly suggest um yeah i guess that's it i've kind of rambled for a a few minutes thanks for vibing and keeping it tight yeah (laughs) that's what i'm talking about (laughs) see y'all next time peace out people